The House has voted for an exemption to President Obama's health care law. Carlotta Bradley explains. The House has approved bipartisan legislation that would exempt U.S. health plans sold to expatriate workers from having to comply with requirements under the Affordable Care Act. It's aimed at helping U.S. insurance companies that compete with foreign firms that don't have to comply with ACA requirements, such as free preventive care and a ban on lifetime coverage limits. There's widespread agreement on the need for a fix regarding expatriate plans that can be sold to Americans working overseas and foreigners working in the U.S. or elsewhere, but senior Democrats in the White House say the bill as written has too many loopholes. Carlotta Bradley, Washington. The kissing congressman is told he should leave Congress sooner than later. Jerry Bodlander has the details on who wants him out and the congressman's response. A day after Louisiana Republican Congressman Vance McAllister said he'll leave Congress at the end of this term, one of his leaders told him that's not soon enough. House Majority Leader Eric Cantor met with McAllister, who was caught on tape kissing a married female aide, and told him he should resign. McAllister, who is married, called his action a personal failure and has apologized. Cantor said McAllister's behavior falls short of the high moral standard expected of lawmakers. Jerry Bodlander, Capitol Hill. A 16-year-old charged with the fatal stabbing of a fellow Connecticut high school student is being held on $3 million bond. Tim McGuire has an update on the crime that shocked the community. Police say Christopher Plaxon told an officer, I did it, shortly after Marin Sanchez was stabbed to death in the hallway of their high school last Friday, only hours before the junior prom. Plaxon is charged as an adult. In a court filing, a witness described trying to pull Plaxon off Sanchez and another saw him throw away a bloody knife. Plaxon, who has been held at a medical facility, is being transferred to an age-appropriate correction facility where he will continue to have psychiatric attention. He'll be arraigned on Friday. I'm Tim McGuire. Congress will dedicate a special tree as part of Holocaust Remembrance Week. Jerry Bolander reports on the Anne Frank tree. Seventy years ago, Anne Frank wrote in her diary that the horse chestnut tree that she could see from her hiding place was covered in leaves and even more beautiful than the year before. That tree was a source of strength and inspiration for her. Today, congressional leaders will dedicate the Anne Frank Memorial Tree. It's a sapling from the tree that Anne Frank wrote about and stands on the west lawn of the Capitol. It is one of several planted around the U.S. by the Anne Frank Center to teach future generations about tolerance and justice. Jerry Bodlander, Capitol Hill. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Rick Young. Burdened with material comforts, America's wealthy can expect another disappointing holiday this year. As Brian Scott tells us, the rich will simply be buying too many things to experience the true meaning of Christmas. All across the country, those at the top of the economic ladder are denied a privilege that the poorest of the poor take for granted. Rather than fall victim to the rampant consumerism that seems to increase each year, the poor find meaningful joy in simple Christmas traditions, like singing carols to keep warm and hugging relatives who have not yet died. At stores like these, the spiritually bereft must scramble for popular holiday toys in a vain attempt to duplicate the Christmas time happiness that the impoverished enjoy. Poor people are grateful for just a roof over their heads or something to eat. My wife and I are both lawyers. So that's not enough for us. I certainly hope poor people don't take what they don't have for granted. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want. Just dial toll free. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Also, Skype into the show. Username there is LRN.FM. With you tonight, Ian here. Brett. And Mark. Brett's here from the School Sucks Project. We'll talk more about that here in a little bit. Also, coming up, the Department of Justice is attacking porn stars. We'll tell you what they're doing with Operation Choke Point. Yes, that's what they called this. 
Uh, we'll get into that here in a moment. But there's actually an issue that I thought was kind of an interesting question about, you know, like a what would you do uh, scenario that is based on based on real life. So let me set the scene for you, gentlemen. Right. Uh, you've got a situation where a couple of folks, in this case, Free State Project participants, but it could be anybody, it could be you. A couple of folks moved into a, a multi-room house. And they did not know the roommates in this multi-room house. It was just one of those things. They needed a place to, to go. They rented a room in this house. There were other rooms in the same house that were being rented by other people. So maybe, let's say, another half dozen people were living in the, the various other rooms of this house. Yeah. You know, it's kind of one of those things where there's a shared hallway, shared kitchen, that kind of thing. Just a house with rooms that are being rented out. And it turns out that some of the people that were staying in this particular home were not the most desirable of roommates fights were happening someone was stealing from you know breaking into other roommates rooms and stealing from those rooms this wasn't jail right this nope. wasn't prison this okay. was a house uh, that was being rented all right so not an exactly comfortable place to stay probably something that these folks would have most wanted to be temporary they were looking for a new place to move mm -hmm. um, as a result of finding out that their roommates were uh, were very undesirable. Well, it turns out that at some point, and I don't have the exact timeline of, of how this all played out, so there was you know various drama amongst the roommates yelling and fighting and stealing and things like that. Then at some point, apparently one of the roommates brings in a fugitive into the house. Now, Fugitive being somebody who's on the run from the law? Correct. All right. Now, the activists who are staying in this house... Uh, they did not know for what reason this person was a fugitive, nor does that really matter. Turns out it was a drug charge, like felony drug charges or whatever, but this guy, you know, he's a fugitive. There's a, a warrant out for his arrest. He's wanted. There's a, a, there are cops looking for this guy. So he's a fugitive from the law, and it doesn't matter what the charges are. The Lots fact of people is, have warrants. I mean, warrants aren't particularly uncommon. Folks don't even know they have them in most cases. Well, in this case... The, uh, the activists in this case were informed that this person was a fugitive, and they informed the roommates that they did not consent to the idea of harboring said fugitive in the house. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what he did, because it's dangerous for them as, as you know, being Absolutely. in the house. Yeah. What's you're, the danger? You're well, I bringing mean, in cop bait, essentially. Exactly. Uh, the danger is a, a police raid and your arrest for harboring a fugitive. Also, there's probably a considerable amount of anxiety if you don't know a fugitive for what, right? Yeah, that's right. certainly the, the anxiety, but I don't think that harboring includes uh, you know, knowledge, and they have to be able to prove that knowledge. And if everybody's sure. got padlocks on their doors, which it sounds like this is one of those kind of uh, roommate situations, mm -hmm. I think you're going to have a difficult time proving that people mingle much in the house and that folks know that what's going on necessarily in other folks' rooms. Mm, sure, sure. They would have to prove it's like ultimately saying, that you knew. No but... one can bring a fugitive into the apartment complex that mm -hmm. I live in because... Well, that's a little different. There you've got walls and doors uh, separating Rooms people. have walls and... Uh, in this case, if the doors. police determine that the fugitive is inside that home... They're going to get a warrant to search the entire place. And so, okay, so this a fugitive shows up, and he's being harbored by one of the roommates in, in one of their rooms. And okay. uh, even though the activists in this case made it clear they did not consent to this activity going on in their home, the other roommates did it anyway, which I think, to me, is where things went real, real bad here. That's, to me, the aggression in this case. Others will argue the aggression is elsewhere, and we'll get to that part in the story. But to me, that's where the aggression happened when the roommates brought what essentially is cop bait into their house and then disrespected the wishes of their roommates. Because if you, to me, if you don't have 100% agreement with harboring yeah. that fugitive, you've just aggressed against your neighbors by the fact, virtue of the fact that you're now bringing heat down on that location. So time goes by, and I'm not sure how much time we're talking about here, but time goes by. The activists tried to persuade these people to get this person out. You know, this not it's not something they consent to. Ultimately, the police show up, and uh, they talk, I think, to one of the activists at the front door. The police let the person know that they believe that the person is, the wanted fugitive is staying in the home, and that they're going to come back with a warrant, and that when they come back with a warrant, uh, if you're, the, you know, if you're a roommate there, you're subject to being arrested for being an accomplice to harboring this fugitive, essentially. And uh, and so at that point, the uh, the activists in, in question 
made the decision, and this is the controversial kind of decision here, he made the decision to call the police and to inform them that he was not involved in what it was that was going on in that household. Because he was of the belief that the police were going to come back with a warrant, then they were going to search the entire house and find who knows what they might find. In, Seems like uh, a reasonable belief the if person the police came room. to the door and said, we're going to search the house. Right, and th th there was also the reasonable belief, I think, that they would be arrested for harboring the fugitive. Now, Mark, maybe you're right. Maybe they'd have a tough case to prove that, that well, you know, they'd have to prove that he was knowingly harboring the fugitive. Once the police have uh, identified you at the door, claiming, you know, living there and claiming that, uh, you know, that, Oh no, I know nothing about what you're speaking. And then they come back and the and you know the fugitive is there, then you've got a th then you're in a worse position, right? Like if so if you just got a padlock on the door and the cops uh you know come in and or whatever, you're like, "Look, I I just sleep here. I have no idea what's going on." Then you've got a better mm -hmm. case than being, you know, having answered the door and speaking to the police and you know that whole it puts you in a harder position. Yep. No, I understand where you're coming from there. Um so ultimately the question is uh, did this person do wrong against the roommates by calling the police in order to save his his own skin? Because that's that was the reason, that was the rationale for calling the police. I mean, obviously, you know, another answer is, well, leave the household if you don't, you know, if you're feeling uncomfortable. That's not something that most people can just pick up and, and do. Not overnight, to just right. move out. Um, and I don't think they really considered, you know, I think they were looking for places to move, but... The heat wasn't on heavy until the day the cops showed up, and then at that point they got very interested in moving quickly, uh, but ultimately called the police to avoid being charged criminally for harboring this fugitive. Was that the wrong thing to do? I'd have to know the time frames involved here, but it sounds like the best solution is just to get out of the house. Sure. But that didn't happen. No. So uh, considering the police are now coming down on the house— with a threat of, we're going to come back with a warrant and arrest everybody in the house. It sounds, um, it sounds to me like uh, self-defense. However, yeah. I would, That's how I feel about um, it. you know, tell. I'd, I'd also want to tell these people, you know, whoever the fugitive is, is look, um, you know, <laughs> sorry, this is how things had to go. The police were here today. They were looking for you. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to, you know, get your stuff and get out right now. Yeah, but they uh, this isn't their house, so they don't have the ability to just kick somebody out. It would have been t the two of them the police versus the police were other here six. for you today. Yeah. Do you understand that this spot you are in is hot as it could be, and you're going to jail likely sometime in the next 24 hours if you stay on this property? I am making a prediction. I don't know if a conversation like that transpired. I don't have that, that level of detail here. But there are some people who are critiquing the activist in question for calling the police, um, you know, Oh, you're a cop caller. That's a bad thing to do. But to me, I feel like he used that as a defensive thing. And maybe, you know, maybe there was another option that he didn't realize, but it certainly seemed like he was stuck between the, the, the position of you either get arrested and charged with harboring this person who you never consented to harbor in the first place. You know, you go down with the ship or you call the police off and make sure they don't arrest you when they come back to the house. Yeah, I mean as far as other options go, it, it's always nice to think that there you you can come up with a strategy to communicate with anybody, but I've heard about this residence that you're talking about mm -hmm. and I've heard about what went on there and I really can see why that was not an option these or are these roommates who are not wanting to communicate or absolutely friendly. so it doesn't seem like they're you know I love to talk about the world that I'd like to see and how I'd like problems to be solved but we live in this world and that was a real threat that those people found themselves in and I really don't have much of an objection all right want to hear how you feel what would you have done differently was it wrong to call the police in this case I feel like that was a defensive move and it was one of the only things he could have done. Yeah. Uh, 855 450 free. It's Free Talk Live. Hi, I'm Lynn, and I am totally blind. Like many who are totally blind, I have non 24, a circadian rhythm disorder that can put your sleep wake cycle out of sync with the 24 hour day. But I found out there's a new treatment available for non 24. It's called Hetlios Tazimeltian, the first FDA approved treatment for non 24. 
The most common side effects of Hetlios include headache, elevated liver enzymes, nightmares or abnormal dreams, and upper respiratory or urinary tract infection. These may occur more often in patients 65 or older. It may cause drowsiness, so limit your activity to preparing for bed. Hetlios has not been studied, and it is not recommended for use in pregnant women, children, or people with severe liver problems. To learn more and to hear the full prescribing information, visit Hetlios.com or call 844-241-2424. That's 844-241. One two four two four. Hetlios is now available for non twenty four. Talk to your doctor today. Sponsored by Vanda Pharmaceuticals. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled Ten Reasons to Own Gold, or Go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way. Love as your guide. And liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big-time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want, though your comments are certainly welcome on this situation that I've been describing about some really bad roommates, and what would you do? We'll get back into that here in a moment. You can, of course, join us at freetalklive.com, and you can submit content there to the front page of the site, freetalklive.com. You know, uh, alarms, alarm systems are pretty expensive things to, uh, to acquire for your home. But there are some uh, some inexpensive solutions to prevent criminals or to slow them down significantly uh, from being able to access your property and rob you blind. And one of them that I'm pretty impressed with is the Door Devil. We actually have one installed here at the LRN.FM studios, and my installer 
because I'm completely not handy. Uh, my installer says this; he thinks this is a really good product, and it, it does a great job it really is. up your it's door, a, protecting you from getting your door kicked in. It really is a great product, no doubt about it. And when you're talking about costs here, um, I've got nothing against alarm systems if you think you need one for your house, but the door devil would be a first step not a second step to the alarm system. You need to shore up uh, wooden doors and just consider the price tag of the door devil at, I don't know, 60 or $80, something like that, versus the, um, you know, the loss of a television and laptop computers sure. and jewelry and the door repair. Um, you know, I mean, there's just no comparison. Doors are a major target uh, for people that are busting into a house because they know that if there's an alarm system, the door trip, there's a delay, you know, a minute, two minutes or whatever it is, gives, gives the uh, homeowner the time to open their front door and then go shut the alarm off. Whereas if you break a window to come in, the alarm's going to go off right away. So doors are a target. It makes sense to, uh, to shore it up. Go get the Door Devil at doordevil.com. That's doordevil.com. We go to the phones here. James is in New York. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, James. Hey, Phyllis. Hey, what's um, on I your mind? To call in, uh, oh, I want to call in on your bad roommate situation. Um, so I, I guess my take on the thing is that, you know, as a renter, you have a certain amount of property rights that are kind of given to you um, by the person who leases the property to you. And, um, you know, certain areas, I guess, for I have never lived with six roommates, but certain areas of the house were would be considered, I guess, common areas, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think you have a right to say that certain people can't pass through those common areas, especially if they put you at risk. Um, I don't know if it was a situation where they could come up a fire escape and go directly into one room uh, that wasn't these people's specific, uh, I don't know, domain or whatever. Well, but so what you're I saying is here, just to recap for our, our listeners that weren't tuned yeah, in, sure. uh, we've got a, a situation with multiple roommates in a house, and one of the roommates brings in a fugitive uh, into the situation, and two of the roommates say they don't consent to this. So what you're saying is, James, that you believe that there's some sort of right that you have as a roommate to prevent your other roommates from bringing in the people they want to bring into their to their rooms by preventing them well, from... No, no, not to their rooms. I'm saying into the common spaces that you share. I mean, especially if it's going to put you at well, risk, the, I guess. The, um, the, uh, the fugitive was in the room of one of the other roommates. But he, he traveled through oh, okay. a common area, right? Yeah, presumably he traveled through a common area to get there. You're saying there's some sort of right to prevent that from happening? That seems... It seems almost unenforceable. And I don't know if the police would see it that way either. I mean, they see it as, you know, an open residence where a bunch of people live together. And, you know, I, I, I wouldn't put a lot of faith in, in the police's interest in a story beyond that. Yeah, you know? I would agree with you on that. So the the facts are uh, there's a residence. It's a shared residence. They don't know anything about the nature of the relationships or the lack of relationships that the people living in the house have with one another. Uh, and there's a fugitive in the house, and I, I think it would probably be, you know, not to be cynical, you know, but I, I'm thinking that's as far as the police would probably look into it. I mean, so you, it's your opinion that every single person in the house is responsible for the contents of every... No, 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 no. I'm saying that they would be held responsible by the police, right. which is who this person that we're talking about uh, was trying to protect... Uh, himself from if if you're if the police come into your home and they arrest your roommate for having a bong you're not going to be held uh -huh. responsible for that because they would have found the bong in the roommate's room or whatever or maybe somebody claimed it if they found it in a uh, you know a, a common area but in this case we're talking yeah. about a human being and if the police get a warrant to search a property they're going to search every room in they're going to search it all because they had the ability to oh, search so the, con the concern is that is the is the cops coming in and searching the room it's not the like that's that's a, that's concern number one. Concern number one is what are the police okay. going to find if they search the roommate's room who did not consent uh, to having the fugitive stay in the house? Secondly, right. there's also the concern that the roommates could be arrested for harboring a fugitive, which is you know a criminal act. And so even though the roommates might be able to claim, well, we weren't harboring him, you know, you didn't find him in our room. They, the police may still arrest them and and bring the charges, and then you know it would be up to them to prove that they knew that the room that the uh, the fugitive was being held there because it, it's likely that you have to be knowingly harboring the person in order to be convicted of that. I haven't looked at the harboring but, statutes, but yeah, but there's other dangers too. Like even with the fugitive is not involved, like even if the fugitive is not found under the bed in one of the rooms, if the police come in with a warrant and they go into one room in this one residence. 
and they find a bowl with some resin in it, they're searching the whole house. I've had that happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in college. I had, you know, three roommates, and we were all friends. You know, we had pretty good relationships, but w one of my friends had this had turned his closet just into the most beautiful indoor garden, <laughs> and the police found it, and oh, as a result no. of that, they tore my room apart, too. Wow. Right, and they didn't right. put everything so back it, together. Is it that guy's responsibility to not get your room torn apart? I guess if we're all living together and Mark has pot in his room, um, can we all tell him that he has to kick the pot out or something just because it's against the law and it might get us in trouble if the cops find it? Well, I mean, I, I think it would be. I think it's respectful of your other roommates yeah. to to let them know if you have some sort of. Uh, some sort of thing going on, whether it's a marijuana grow operation or harboring a fugitive, that could put them at risk from a, from a police raid. I just think that's a courteous thing to do. It's the appropriate thing to do in a situation with roommates. In this case, uh, they were aware, all the roommates were aware of the fugitive in the house, and not all the roommates consented to it, but it happened anyway. And to me, that's that's an aggression against the other roommates at that point, because you're then bringing in cop bait into your home uh, without everybody's permission. If if they had come in, brought this fugitive in, and convinced everyone in the house, this guy's a good guy, he's sure. worth taking the risk for, let's let's hide him. Uh, if that had happened, and then one of the roommates called the police, that would be an aggression, that would be a violation of the, of the agreement, but there was no agreement like that. This person was being held without the consent of the entirety of the household. Well, what, what about something more benign, like, you know, smoking marijuana with the window open, um, which can also draw the cops higher to your house? Do all those things have to be, you know, signed off by, by all six roommates? Or, you know, I, I guess I, I don't know how much, you know, I guess property ownership or, or whatever you get. There's some renting. lines being, you know, there. I think there's some lines you can draw there. Number one, uh, smoking pot with a window open isn't likely to draw the police to your uh, to your residence unless you've got a neighbor who snitches you out. Uh, it's probably not going to be the cops that are just going to happen to roll by and smell that. But if you've got a fugitive who's a wanted man for which there's a manhunt... It's a risk calculation. It's a lot I mean, higher risk. One is a ticket. Well, not in New Hampshire. One is a misdemeanor. Yeah. And the other is like a serious felony. So there's you know a, a difference in risk involved in those two activities. Thanks, James, for your call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. What would you do if you were in this situation... Where are these roommates bringing this bring this guy in who's wanted by the police and they're not respecting your request to get him out? What would you do? Free talk live. Gentlemen, in search of a million dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My magic mud. The fluoride free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. When the cleaners ruined some special clothing, all they could do was show us a sign that said they weren't responsible. But when they got the letter from one of our Legal Shield attorneys, he promptly gave us a check for $1,152. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. If you are like most people, chances are you're malnourished. Most people do not get the 90 essential nutrients the body needs to survive. This lack of nutrition can lead to all sorts of health issues. If you don't feel as good as you'd like, or if you're looking to get a jump start on a new, healthier you, Longevity has your answer. With the Healthy Start Pack, you get all the nutrients your body needs. With all 90 essential nutrients and 115 fruits and vegetables, you get a supplement system that is antioxidant rich and beyond compare. The Healthy Start Pack includes products backed by 40 years of science and millions of dollars in research, like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, EFA Plus 90, and OsteoFX Plus. To order your Healthy Start Pack today, call 607-739-5595. Again, that number is 607-739-5595. Once you start taking the Healthy Start Pack, you will see and feel why our motto is 90 for life. 
Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com so you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm Free Talk Live, you can bring up anything you want here. I'm talking about bad roommates real bad roommates in this case they brought in a fugitive into the house without the consent of everybody living there we'll talk more about what would you do in that situation here the number is 855 450 free also you can join us on skype our skype username is lrn.fm we continue with uh, more of your thoughts here in moments so mother's day is coming up uh you know what a great idea is get her something that's delicious something that that she's really going to remember because Ian, we were just eating a couple of strawberries during the break, and um, mm -hmm. we were bemoaning that these strawberries weren't Sherry's berries. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. The We've already eaten our Sherry's berries. We have eaten our Sherry's berries, and they're delicious. And if you get mom some, she's going to comment on it, too, because they really are delicious. You go to berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S.com, and there'll be a microphone in the upper right-hand corner. Click on that, enter FTL. There, you can go and order some berries. They start at $20 a piece. That's a 40% savings over retail cost. Or you can double the berries for just $10 more. So go to berries.com, get these delicious strawberries that your mother's going to remember um, probably, for, <laughs> probably for months. Um, I remember for getting them from last year. They're just delicious. Um, they, they were a great seller uh, on Valentine's Day, too. Or you can call 866-FRUIT-02. It's 866-FRUIT-02 or berries.com. Click on the microphone in the upper right-hand corner and enter FTL. All right, let's go to the phones and continue with your thoughts. What would you do in a situation where you've got roommates who have, uh, these are not your friends, they're just random people. They bring in some fugitive you don't know what for. You just know that he's wanted by the police. That's a big part of the story, too. Bring in a fugitive uh, into the house against your wishes. You make it clear you don't want this person there, but they go ahead and harbor him anyway. The police show up. They threaten the uh, the household and uh, claim they're going to come back with a warrant. So in this case, the individual, uh, the activist in question, uh, made the call to call the police. He felt like he was at risk, that uh, these people had put him in a, a 
a position, which is very, very undesirable. Well, I, I think there's one more important part here. He answered the door. The police came to the door. He answered the door, right? I'm not clear on exactly how that went. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not sure if he was already outside when the police came up or, okay. or what well, happened. Yes, but I, okay. Somebody so, talked to the police. He talked I'm to the police? I'm not sure if it was him. I'm not clear on that. Okay. It may have been him. If he's the one who talked to the police, the police are definitely going to connect him to this situation, even though he wasn't. Yeah, so that, I mean, it's always good not to talk to the police, no doubt about it. Well, even if he um, didn't, if the police saw him in residence of the house, they're going to psychologically connect him to this situation. Sure. So what would you do in this situation? Uh, I, I say that the roommates have aggressed against uh, him by, him and his girlfriend in this case, by bringing this person in the, into the home in the first place without their consent. Uh, that's a total violation of respect and, you know, just decor. Let's go to Lumpy in Michigan. Lumpy, you're on Free Talk Live, the in Brett and Mark. Good evening, peaceful warriors, fellow peaceful warriors. Um, headed back your way, uh, back east as we speak, so hopefully my truck is not too loud. Um, in the background. And Ian, you probably would have said something already, so I think we're good. So who isn't cop made anymore? If we didn't have this aggressive, uh, awful, angry, sick, twisted, perverted police system that we have now, nobody would have had any problem trying to help anyone, no matter who they were, try and get to a solution. And I really think that if what the sickness, what the problem, or the root of the situation is, is that a we have police, and b we believe in them. And well, we, and then c we think that this should continue because I have, and I I think that in this case, I don't blame the roommates because nobody knows what the heck to do when this stuff, when the when the when people angry people with guns come with you know whether they have badges or not, when they come in and they come in and and, and harass, and you know they're. This is these are the real criminals. I don't know. We still haven't established what the supposed bad guy did, but we know what the rest of the bad guys did. And now everybody else's lives are all screwed up because of it. OK. And, you know, the thing is, they threatened from the beginning and they've done this. They do this with everybody. And that's why they're coming after you, Ian, for everything they possibly can. You know, well, and they're going to they're going to <laughs> they're going to continue to sorry go ahead sorry. all right well the, the one missing the the important I, I agree with the thrust of what you're saying but the thing that's missing from from this story is that the people whose actions are in question as far as call getting the police involved or calling the police they didn't know what the guy did right so when we they're have the information what they're threatened already. They're under threat already. Yeah, they I don't think it matters. No Even if they'd known what he did, yeah. they still may not want. May, they still not may not feel comfortable oh, yeah. harboring. But, him. but the emotions are a big part of it. And I would think I'm just putting myself yeah. in their shoes. And uh, you know, this is a situation I could have been in, and we can talk more about that later if it if it's relevant. But. I would have been very uneasy knowing the person was a fugitive and not knowing why they were a fugitive. There's lots of, like, not-so-bad right, reasons well, why you could be house, a fugitive. I'm not afraid of fugitives. Yeah, send them to my house. I'm not afraid of fugitives. I am afraid of the cops. Okay, but it, it depends on what— there's some, there, there's some fugitives who are worse than most cops. There are yeah. some. Well, some. Okay. But, but I think my odds are about as good as my dark game, you know. You know, I can hardly hit the hit, Look, hit the Kurt, dart. or I'm oh. sorry, not Kurt, Lumpy. Uh, <laughs> Lumpy. Good, good. Well, Lumpy, I know that, uh, you know, I appreciate where you're coming from. And I think that it, you know, it would be very cool that the, if there were a group of people who were willing to hide uh, political per people that are persecuted politically. I mean, people that are after, that the cops are after for drug charges are essentially political prisoners. And so I think that it would be heroic of a, of a household or more than one household to you know have an underground network where people could hide out who had not harmed anyone and avoid capture. I think that would be awesome. If Rich Paul comes to, if Rich Paul comes to co-host on your show and, uh, and there's a warrant out for his arrest, uh, now are you harboring a fugitive? Just wanted to Add that in the mix. Only if no, you only if you know you're harboring a fugitive. It's usually knowingly is yeah, the operative I, word. But what I wanted to point yeah. out was that while it would be heroic for people to do what you're talking about and harbor a nonviolent criminal from being put into a cage, at the same time you can't expect everyone to 
take a risk like that. A lot of people are very, very concerned Agreed. with risks like that, and they totally, wouldn't want totally to. Agree, yeah. They wouldn't want to consent. So, therefore, would it not be wrong of you as as a roommate? Let's say we're let's say we're roommates, Kurt, and uh, you've got this friend who is a, a fugitive from from the law. And yep. I am just I'm just scared and I don't want to deal with the police and I don't want any of that going on in my house. You know, maybe I've got a marijuana grow operation or something that I would prefer uh, to not have the police find. And I tell you, Kurt, you know, I don't feel comfortable harboring this guy. Would you bring the person into the home? Uh, no, not no. I, I wouldn't be able. That's not that's I don't think I would be able to. But because I would, that would I be would wrong, right? Because alternative. it would be disrespectful. Yeah. I would have found another alternative. yeah. It hasn't been below freezing up there for a little while. I don't know when this happened, but, you know, I, I think maybe, you know, if it's cold out and the guy's got no place else to go, yeah, but, you know, here's here's the thing. Stay away from my shit. And maybe I got to... You guys can't let you say that on the radio, Kurt. Yeah. Thanks for the call tonight. Right. Appreciate it. Uh, 855-450-FREE. <laughs> That's 855-450-3733. Uh, because it, is, it would be very disrespectful to, you know, to essentially force a roommate into yeah. a position that they did not wish to be in. Now, the other thing, too, and it's easy to, like, quarterback this, you know, several Mondays after the game took place. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously, I think in a situation like this, it's having a house meeting would not be easy, right? Getting everybody together to talk constructively about something. But what if the relationships were good enough, and it doesn't sound like they were, mm -mm. and this situation had to happen, um, a talk about a contingency plan, you know, um, if the police do come, you know, like what happens if, yeah. but it doesn't sound like the people that, um, you know, who were involved in this situation as the other roommates, they don't seem like what happens if forward thinking kind of people, you know, if they're bringing a fugitive mm -hmm. into the house. So the person who we're talking about probably couldn't have had that conversation. I'd love to get your thoughts on how you would have handled this situation. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And who is the aggressor in this situation? Free Talk Live. All right, hold on, hold on. we got to interrupt the regularly scheduled stuff for just a minute. I've got to tell you about this because it's weird. It'll make sense. What if I told you that eating this one weird spice could actually help you reverse diabetes? I know, it's crazy, right? Well, if you or somebody you care about has diabetes or prediabetes or metabolic, met, meh, easy for me to say, metabolic syndrome, you've got to check out this video. It's free. You may have heard about this. People who've tried it say that they've been able to normalize their blood sugar, stop taking their diabetes meds, and their doctors are all for it. So what is it? What's behind this? Well, the company says it's a natural drug-free approach to reversing diabetes, and they say that it works in as little as four weeks, and it all starts with this one weird kitchen spice you probably have in your kitchen right now. So you should check out the free video and see for yourself. It's at weirdspice55.com. So write that down. It's weirdspice55.com. Weirdspice55.com. Imagine an acne treatment breakthrough that even Proactive says is better than Proactive. Announcing all new Proactive Plus, the revolutionary new way to clear your skin from the number one name in acne care. Proactive Plus is our best, most effective solution ever. And when you call 1-800-721-4255 today, you can have it tomorrow. Proactive Plus is the modern acne miracle that treats your skin beautifully. The plus means more. More precise, targeted medicine for faster, gentler acne prevention. And more skin-loving solutions so your complexion can look bright and beautiful. I am just so happy with Proactive Plus. I don't think my skin has ever looked this good. Call 1-800-721-4255. Be one of the first to try Proactive Plus. Guaranteed 100% risk-free. You won't see this limited-time offer on TV. It's a radio exclusive. 1-800-721-4255. 1-800-721-4255. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, 
and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of Liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Have you ever wanted to help a hardworking person get their business off the ground? Then join me in enjoying some BuzzBox coffee. Let's make a difference, one cup at a time. Join us in helping people buy their own coffee farms through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Free Talk Live coffee drinkers will truly change lives forever. To get the best coffee you've ever tasted, it's organic, shade-grown, and top 1% Arabica grade. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. The first pound's free, just cover shipping. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you're invited to take control of the airwaves here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Brett is here with the School Sucks Project. You can go to schoolsucksproject.com and learn more and enlighten yourself with all manner of audio and even videos. Yes, yes. So, so, yeah, I can tell you just a little bit, Please. a couple recommendations. Uh, I just had Ben Stone on the show. We did a two-parter. The Bad Quaker. Yes, The Bad Quaker. And uh, the first show we did was called, um, what did we call it? Something like Making a Market for Liberty, like making the idea of making liberty popular. Mm. And the second show we did was called Diminishing the Market for Government, because right now, government is pretty darn popular. People love it yeah. and hate it all at once. So um, w- one of the things that came up uh, in our discussions was, you know, pushing a button to end the state. I think it was Murray Rothbard who introduced that idea. And Ben had a really great, like, three or four minute monologue. Uh, so I turned it into a video and I would love for people to go and watch it. It's called Push a Button and Stop Government. Would you do it? Yeah. Well, would, are you asking me? Sure. No. No. Would you? Because people would just be too shocked. What would be your reasoning for not pushing the button to end the state? Well, first of all, uh, you know, people have to want to live in a voluntary world. It's true. And if they don't, and th- there's also you know, a lot of people who, if a button was pushed and we woke up in that world tomorrow, uh, I, I forget who said it, but government would be up and running again in no time because, of, uh, because we have major philosophical corruptions that we're still dealing with that go back a long time. And I really believe that that's something that we have to evolve out of. And part of it is recognizing the impact of state schooling. Part of it is, you know, recognizing the impact of bad parenting. Um, you know, religion even uh, could play into it a little bit. So there, there's lots of reasons why we live in the world we live in today, for sure. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, it's a complicated web to get out of. And uh, pushing a button would, I think, make a lot of things worse and it also wouldn't be a very good advertisement like if the if we woke up on march 1st and lived in pure anarchy after the world we live in today it wouldn't be a very good advertisement for anarchy on march 2nd not too many people would be very excited about it i don't think i think um also there's some but there there are some gordian knots the government's created yes um and that make it very sort of uh, difficult to uh, extricate oneself mm-hmm. yes from so that's you know, that's one. That's the other side of that coin. Okay, so obviously it's a ridiculous what-if scenario because that button's never going to exist, but nope. it's still fun to think about it. And I agree with the things you're saying, Brett, that people have to be ready for the idea of ending the state in mm-hmm. order for the state to ever end, or otherwise they'll just create it all over again. 
and so on and so forth. So what we have today is ultimately a manifestation of what people believe, and people believe in the state today. And if people are continuing to believe in the state, and then all of a sudden the state is wiped out, uh, then you're right. I think they they would recreate it. However, uh, if we could have such a button, you'd really have to have to ask, well, what would pushing it mean? Would pushing the button mean that all of the people who are in prison for victimless crimes and victim crimes, yeah, would they be released? Would the guards, would they have to stay in the prisons and the guards just all disappear? Like, what would that look like? Because if, if I could free a bunch of victimless criminals from prison cells and end the wars in the other countries around the world— I'd go ahead and push that damn button and let let the chips fall where they may. Speaking as the uh, only person who's uh, spent any good time um, thinking about what would happen to prisons uh, prisoners if a uh, if you saw some kind of uh, socioeconomic collapse in this country, um, you know we used to play this little conundrum um, in prison and. I think that you'd pretty quickly see prison guards going through the prisons and shooting all the inmates. Yeah, well, I think that— what? And and what was the circumstance that you think that would happen if the state disappeared? If if the state collapsed, if for whatever reason— No, no, you're pushing a button and the state's going away. So wouldn't that mean the prisons would just disappear as well? I don't know what you're referring to precisely. Well, but with the guards, and you mean the people who who populate government, the people? Because government is people. Right. Government is two things. It's a belief. The state is people. It's, it's a belief. In- it's a belief, and it's, you know, people animated by that belief. So do all those things go away? I mean, it's an interesting question. If you If you push the button and the belief in government— and the idea that then might makes right it. and force solves problems disappears tomorrow— we, we might be okay, yeah. you know, <laughs> but that's not how it's going to be. I mean, I think I, I see the state as as a symptom of things that human beings haven't figured out how to get right yet. Agreed. I mean, we see like, but it's it, also momentum. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's momentum yeah. of a governmental system that's been around since the agrarian revolution with the creation of sort of a master slave mentality um, at that point. And it probably was slavery before that, but they just slaves weren't nearly as useful. And sure. it's got a, a lot of momentum. So it's very, very hard to slow it down and to stop it and to reverse its direction, which, of course, is what a lot of liberty-minded people are trying to do through the system, which is a very frustrating and difficult process, not to mention expensive and time-consuming. Um, so if you could press a button and you know start it all from zero again, I'd still press the damn button just because— I know you would, buddy. You, you know, <laughs> okay, yeah, people are going to rebuild the state, but at least they'd be rebuilding from zero rather than this behemoth that we currently have. This is the have. problem with the button, uh, Brett, okay. is that some jackass is going to push it. <laughs> um, and, you know, like somebody who doesn't put as much time and energy into thinking about it. Well, I'm well, I'm saying, whoa, 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 Ian, let me talk to you. Let, let me talk to you. Some activist, some liberty activist is going to run around Ian and push the button. Um, you know, just as I'm trying to explain the, whatever the consequences are. Yeah, it was Rothbard who said I would blister my finger pushing the button. Really? Right. So, I mean, I, I guess he would stand there and when it starts up again the next day, he'd push it again. <laughs> and he'd just do this over and over. Every day he'd wake up and push the button. If he could do that, that would be really interesting because it would essentially uh, force people into creating alternatives to the, the coercive institutions. Absolutely. But now we're getting off into this ridiculous. I mean, we've already gone far it's ridiculous. afield in this. The question <laughs> this itself, yeah. I mean, the question itself. It's an interesting philosophical what if question. Yeah. Uh, but it's terribly unrealistic, of course. Of course. So uh, unfortunately, we're stuck without the button, and we are going to have to uh, to influence people. People oh, bu- are going to have to change their minds about what the state is and whether or not they support it. The button is education, um, and you've got to talk to people about these ideas over and over again. And you have to yep. make these ideas cool. People are working hard right now to make government pretty cool. You got Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about taking our tax money and going to Mars. Yeah, he's got Obama, places to go. Yeah, Obama is cool. States are legalizing marijuana. People are getting health care. Mm. Like, government is uh, thumbs up for a lot of people right now. So it's it's becoming this cool thing. And, I mean, you know— I was being encouraged to go work for the government right out of college. People are like, you're crazy if you're not going to work for the government. The benefits are sweet. You get way overpaid. Um, so, you're looking at teaching. 
Uh, well, I was, yeah, I mean, I was looking at a couple of things, maybe social services, because I was working um, in a private school. And that actually reminds me, I worked in this private school as a boarding school for quote unquote juvenile delinquents. Uh, Mark and I, I think, have had different experiences, but what those experiences have in common is pushing the button and making the state disappear. I think we've spent time around people that make us a little hesitant. Oh, yeah. Well, I entered prison as an anarcho-communist. Remember this. Yeah. I left a Republican. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was no thanks. Yeah, and I and I saw, you know, the inner city and, and the young product of the inner city of places like Baltimore and Washington, D.C. and, uh, you know, New York City and Providence, Rhode Island. And uh, the state is so much a part of people there. And I mean minorities mm-hmm. who... If you look at the history of this country over the last couple hundred years, the state never should have been able to get jammed into their psyche the way it is. They should have always rejected it. And they reject, um, you know, this Disney version of history about, you know, heroes like Abraham Lincoln and George Washington. They know that's BS, you know, but through, uh, you know, the inner city and the government aid, the welfare system, HUD, um, the state has been put into them. Yeah, because really? I mean, people forget. Some people are too young to know, and others forget. At the same time, many in the inner city do know how to reject the police. And, Absolutely, and know better than to talk to them. But you know, my theory is that in the in the mid 1960s, you know, the ghettos, the inner cities, especially in minority areas, they were getting ready to explode, and there was going to be a revolution. But Lyndon Johnson, clever, clever gangster that he was, figured out a way to buy a lot of people off. Um, with uh, the Great Society and the welfare programs, and it so seemed to work. Don't miss more of Brett. He's going to continue on the show here tonight, but you can get a lot more of him over at schoolsucksproject.com, uh, where they initially had discussed with the Bad Quaker the button-pushing situation. Yes, And absolutely. Bad Quaker is a really bright guy, so I imagine that oh, was an brilliant. interesting yeah. conversation. Uh, coming up, we'll give you a solution to some of these problems because, yeah, we do have to convince people that the state's a terrible idea And I think that one of the keys to convincing people is concentrating our activism in one area. Of course, that's the Free State Project. We'll tell you about the Porcupine Freedom Festival coming up here. Also, Operation Choke Point. It's the Department of Justice attack on porn stars. We'll tell you what's going on on the way here on Free Talk Live. Hour 2 is next. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. I travel for work during the week, and it's tough being away from home. But America's Best Value Inn treats me like family, with free internet, so I can keep up with work and those back home. A continental breakfast in the morning, and instant rewards with the Value Club, so I can save more money at most of their 1,000 hotels in North America. If you travel for work, go to AmericasBestValueInn.com and discover the best value on the road. MeowBit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. MeowBit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of Namecoin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, MeowBit. Go to MeowBit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 
From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, April 30th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.26 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,286 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $446. Antiwar.com reports the Supreme Court declined to hear the case that a group of activists, journalists, and academics, including Noam Chomsky, Chris Hedges, and Daniel Ellsberg, brought against the indefinite detention provision of the NDAA. This is a huge gift to the Obama administration, which will no longer have to answer for the terrible language in the provision, which implies that U.S. citizens can be denied their rights to due process if the government accuses them of helping Al-Qaeda or its affiliated forces. So, the court must have a good reason, right? The court said in part, the appeals court said the challengers had no standing because they could not show the provision has any bearing on the government's authority to detain U.S. citizens. The court said the plaintiffs who were not U.S. citizens lacked standing to sue because they did not show a sufficient threat that the government will detain them under the provision. Antiwar.com adds, given the laws on the books and previous court precedent, it is quite clear that journalists, academics, dissidents, and activists of the type involved in this suit are at risk of detainment. The court's failure to hear this case is a terrible move, and when this law is used at some point in the future to detain an American without due process, the court will be remembered for ensuring that inevitable obscenity. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760 The MIT Bitcoin Club announced yesterday two MIT students have raised half a million dollars for a project to distribute $100 in Bitcoin to every undergraduate student at MIT this fall. Jeremy Rubin and Dan Elitzer have undertaken an ambitious project aimed at creating an ecosystem for digital currencies at MIT. Plans for the MIT Bitcoin project involve a range of activities, including working with professors and researchers across the institute to study how students use the Bitcoin they receive, as well as spurring academic and entrepreneurial activity within the university in this burgeoning field. Through the MIT Bitcoin project, Rubin and Elitzer aim to establish MIT as a global hub where Bitcoin-related research, ideas, and ventures are studied, discussed, and developed. The bulk of funding for the project is being provided by MIT alumni with significant additional support from within the Bitcoin community. The total of over $500,000 already pledged will cover the distribution of Bitcoin to all 4,528 undergraduates, as well as infrastructure and informational activities related to the initiative. Rubin said, giving students access to cryptocurrencies is analogous to providing them with internet access at the dawn of the internet era. You've heard of shinybadges.com, but you need to check out the new causes tab. Every item in that section includes a donation to a worthy liberty project like the Free Ross Albrick Legal Defense Fund. So go to shinybadges.com, click on the new causes tab, and get yourself a quality product that not only supports the cause you believe in, but starts a conversation with your neighbors. Plus, get a free gift when you pay with Bitcoin at shinybadges.com. Business Insider reports a new poll surveying young Americans' political attitudes released by Harvard University's Institute of Politics on Tuesday found that millennials have less trust in government than ever before. Harvard's poll showed millennials, which the pollsters defined as people aged 18 to 29, have lost trust in a variety of different major public institutions, including the president, the military, Congress, the Supreme Court, and the federal government as a whole. Of all the institutions tracked by the poll, the president and military lost the most trust among young Americans with a seven-point drop. Overall, the pollster said the level of trust millennials have in most American institutions tested in our survey have dropped below even last year's historically low numbers. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. 
According to a study released Thursday by the Princeton University Department of Biology, this local two-year-old woodland chipmunk has crafted a far more secure and dependable plan for the future than eight out of ten Americans. Reporters spoke to citizens to get their view on the study. Clearly this chipmunk is pretty impressive. I mean, he wakes up every morning and says, I need to collect acorns and berries for the winter. He sets goals for himself and he gets it done. He has to make a burrow in a tree stump. That's exactly what he does. He doesn't pause and have a snack and lay around for a few hours. Out of nearly 40 separate interviews with Americans, 33 told reporters they were very impressed by the chipmunk's continued display of foresight, personal responsibility, and pragmatic decision making when considering his own future. He's preparing for winter, he's building a home, and he's trying to get enough nutrients to make it throughout the rest of the day. All this while being worried about uh, maybe getting eaten by a wolf or an owl or something. Earlier this week, the electricity went off in my home because I forgot to pay my bill. It's the second time this year. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the second hour of the program. Plenty of time for you to bring up whatever's on your mind here tonight. Coming up, the Department of Justice targeting porn stars. And maybe we'll continue on the list of 30 things to stop doing to yourself, which we've been doing Wednesdays with uh, Brett here from the School Sucks Project. Uh, also, want to give you an update on a story we covered in the last hour. Uh, we're talking about a situation with a roommate, uh, with multiple roommates in a house. The some roommates brought in a fugitive into this uh, the living situation against the wishes of a couple of the roommates. The two roommates who uh, did not wish for the fugitive to be there obviously were not respected by the other roommates. Ultimately, this cop bait brought the heat down on the house when the cops, you know, figured out where this guy or where they thought this guy was staying. Uh, the cops showed up and they talked to somebody at the front door. A detail I did not have in the last hour was to whom they spoke. Turns out the person who they talked to at the front door was not uh, one of the two roommates who was objecting to the fugitive. So we had thought maybe the, the roommate in that question had gone and spoken to the police and thereby kind of dug himself into a hole a little bit deeper, but that was not the case. Uh, but the roommate uh, who did not consent to the fugitive staying there did overhear the conversation at the door, and he believed from hearing that conversation that the police were imminently going to retrieve a warrant for the house to come in and search for this person, and that would possibly result in people being arrested. So, Brett, you said uh, you would have gotten out of there. Was that what you said? Yeah, but I understand that that's not the easiest thing to do overnight or or In this case, it was the same day. In this case, the cops came, you know, let's say it was 11 o'clock, or whenever, you know, sometime during the day, the cops came and they made that they made the statement that they were going to come back. Yeah, and so yeah. presumably it would have been a matter of hours. Yeah, based on the situation as it's been described, based on the information that this person had, and and really based on the the situation socially for or anti-socially for for lack of a better word, I have no objection to what he did. Um, I I think that these were the right decisions. Maybe, um, you know, and, and again, you're under pressure in a situation like that. You've got you've got the knowledge that the police are likely going to come back yeah. and they're going to be itching to make some arrests when they do come back for harboring a fugitive, which I don't imagine that's a misdemeanor. I could be wrong. Doesn't sound like a misdemeanor. No, it, it definitely sounds, doesn't. It sounds pretty serious. And uh, and, you know, then they're going to search the house and who knows what else they'll find, and what other charges they'll bring at you at that point. What they'll take. Yeah, I mean, right. it is It is really, I, I agree with what you said. It is an act of aggression because... To bring a fugitive in without the consent of 100% of the household. And think about what's at stake. I mean, we already talked about the situation. If they find a bowl with resin in it in, in another room, they're tearing the house apart, mm -hmm. which is at, at the very least, even if there's no other consequences, a huge inconvenience and some potential property damage that you're not going to be compensated for. But also... Um, who knows what they're? Who knows what's going to wind up being taken, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, because like the situation was bad. People had locks on their doors. The cops search the house. They arrest people. They leave what the doors unlocked. The rooms, you know, turned up. Um, it's it, it sounds like uh, that could potentially be a free for all for the thieves if they're still there or they're not arrested. It's a very. I mean, there's just so many bad outcomes from from this situation. I would want to. Um, relieve myself of that pressure of, you know, thinking that I'm going to go to jail or I'm going to be charged with a felony mm -hmm. and I would get out of there 
as fast as I could. So I think in, in a very difficult situation, you know, not just as far as time, but I would I, I would have to say I would be pretty wrecked, you know, like as far as anxiety. So one of the other well. details I think that's yeah. relevant to mention here is you had suggested why not why not just leave the house? Okay. Yeah. So you got the police, you say you're gonna yeah. come back, why not just leave, go to a friend's house for a couple of days? The reason that wasn't an option or that, he, as I understand it, he didn't feel that was an option was because he'd already had his things stolen out of his room. Uh, and so he didn't want to leave the, the house unoccupied. He didn't want to leave all his possessions Right, unpack all, there. Pack all his stuff up and get it out. Basically, just move out. Right. So being that there was this big question mark of, well, when are the police going to come back? Is it going to be an hour, two hours? I mean, how long is it going to take him to go down and see Judge Burke and get a warrant signed? I mean, it's not a large town. It would only take them five minutes to drive to the courthouse from the, the place that they were at. So, you know, who knows how much time you're dealing with here? Would it be a same day return? It may very well be. That's not going to give you enough time to really get much out, if, especially if you don't have anywhere to take any of that stuff or whatever. I mean, luckily, he had a, an activist network who came to his aid. He made a call to the Porcupine 411 system. And a number of us came out on very, very short notice and literally moved him out that same day. So we were able to effect a move within about a two-hour time window. But still, the call had already been made at yeah. that point. And, you know, you're under a lot of pressure. You don't know when those police are going to come back. And you want to make sure you don't get arrested when they do. I feel like it was a self-defensive move. Yeah, I don't Maybe think the call is the optimum yeah. answer. But uh, Maybe there would have been a better way to go about it. But when you've got the pressure on, you may not be thinking about all the options. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, and I don't think there were that many options. It doesn't sound, I mean, because all the uh, options that I can think of involve dealing with the other people in the house. And based on just the creation of this situation, it doesn't sound like uh, they were very reasonable people. So that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to share a little bit more detail on that for those of you who uh, were tuned into the first hour. If you missed it, you can always go to freetalklive.com and grab up our archives there. Uh, so, moving to national news from Reason.com, their hit-and-run blog, despite being in good financial standing, adult film performers and others in the porn industry have had bank accounts abruptly terminated, and the U.S. Department of Justice, DOJ, may have had something to do with it. Under Operation Choke Point, the DOJ and its allies are going after legal but subjectively undesirable business ventures by pressuring banks to terminate their bank accounts or refuse their business. The very premise is clearly chilling. The Department of Justice is coercing private businesses in an attempt to centrally engineer the American marketplace based on its own politically biased moral judgments. Tar Sounds exactly like that, yeah. Yeah, and by the way, this isn't the first... Uh, salvo in this uh, war against porn. It's been going on since the Bush administration, uh, during the Barack Obama administration. You might think to yourself, oh, Democrats, they're more open-minded about uh, that sort of thing. But no, no, the prosecutions have continued under uh, Obama. We haven't heard about too many of them, but some of the big names include uh, this, you know, freak guy named Max Hardcore. He was one of the bigger ones who went, you know, went down because he was targeted for making unpopular pornography. Not illegal pornography, but stuff that was really gross, like abusive kind of yeah. vile bodily fluids kind of pornography. And uh, nobody was willing to stand up for this guy uh, in the industry. They basically just, you know, hung him out to dry to some extent and let him take the flack for the industry, maybe thinking that if they let a few people go as sacrificial lambs that the government would leave them alone. But it sounds That's to me like... That's not the way like, it works. No, it sounds to me like they're expanding their attack now. Well, it could be entirely different motives, too. I mean, what might have been motivating the DOJ under Bush could be in entirely different. It's the same DOJ. I mean, the bureaucrats aren't changing out with every administration. There's I would wonder at what level these decisions are made, and when a new administration comes in, how many people at the top they replace. Well, I don't Not know that, um, I, you know, so we're speculating as to why. It seems yeah, reasonable. Yeah, yeah. It seems reasonable that, um, that you know, porn is being uh, attacked not because they're weak, but because they're undesirable. Because they're certainly not weak. They've got money. Um, you know, the porn industry is, you know— it, it, it's popular. <laughs> well, I think the motives are the same. It's get that money. That's the motives. And and but if what's you're, the money? How do they get the money by denying um, you know porn companies bank accounts essentially? The, well, um, there's there's an even bigger motive than that, and we can come back to that one. And if you're a bureaucracy, day in and day out, your job is to justify your existence. 
right? So, I mean, you always have to be finding new things to get into, you know, and new things to patrol. So I think that's the primary motive. Obviously, there would have to be some kind of uh, forfeiture to, to make it worth the effort, I would think. I don't know. I don't think so on this one. In this case, maybe that's not necessary. What what they're doing in this case is they're just essentially telling banks, you don't give bank accounts to porn uh, companies and porn stars, period, end of story. And they're shutting accounts. Um, They're, they're, you know, saying, hey, we don't want to do business with you anymore. Uh, Daddy said, said no, no. Interesting. Not just porn uh, stars, apparently. They're also targeting payday lenders, ammunition salespeople, dating services, purveyors of drug paraphernalia, and online gambling sites. We'll come back with more on what's happening here with the Department of Justice trying to go after things that some people find fun. Uh, 855-450 free. No fun allowed here in the land of the free. This is Free Talk Live. You can share your thoughts. Everybody wants to know, what can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is. And it's at bitcoingeneralstore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything, with free shipping. What can you find at BitcoinGeneralStore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical Bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. you got to see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Coplock.org slash pivothead. To ensure that a record of the truth of police interactions exists and is accessible, we each need to fill. That's why we're happy to announce the Accountability Through Transparency video contest, the winner of which will receive a pair of Pivothead sunglasses. For more information and to submit your video entry, go to cutblock.org slash pivothead. One, document with a camera a police employee exhibiting double standards or the standards we expect them to live up to. This can be done while on foot, during a vehicle stop, while submitting an open records request, etc. 2. Upload your video to your YouTube channel. 3. Fill out the form at coplock.org slash pivothead by the deadline of midnight Eastern Standard Time, May 23, 2014. 4. The winner, chosen by contest sponsors, will be notified by email and the Pivothead sunglasses will be shipped once a mailing address is received. Coplock.org slash pivothead. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. 
Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, bring up whatever you want and do a toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That is the Pro XPN toll-free line. 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. We were talking about how great it is to have liberty-minded people all in the same place together. And that is what the Free State Project is all about. It's about bringing people to the same geographic area who actually care enough about freedom to uproot their lives and move to acquire more of it and then get active once they move here. To, uh, to ensure that we get even more freedom on into the future because we do need to change people's minds about the idea of the state. And it's, an, it's a huge task that we have ahead of us. And in order to make our jobs more effective, uh, in order to make our activism and our educational efforts more effective, we need to have more people in one area who believe this way already so as to easier able to move those ideas into society through conversations with friends and family and people at work and you know people in civic groups or whatever it is that people do, volunteering, wherever it is you encounter regular people and conversations start where a pro-liberty perspective could be useful. If people are encountering the ideas of freedom in more than one way, because where I come from, I was like the lone dude on the side of the road with a honk if you hate taxes sign. And it was it was a pretty lonely job doing activism down in Florida, and uh, there were a handful of people down there, but there really weren't very many people doing much of anything. Up here, if you've got a good idea, people are going to sign on. They're going to help out. Uh, there are people that will back you up if you end up going to court for something. If the government comes after you, they've got your back. And it's just amazing having a community of people who care about freedom. We've got that here in New Hampshire, and the Free State Project has only just gotten started. You can go to freestateproject.org to learn more about it and get signed up. We need to get to 20,000 signers. We've got over 15,500 today, so we're, we're still working on that goal. But people have moved already. Uh, we've moved here to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project, and thousands more are coming. So if you want to be with people who actually care about freedom enough to do something, this is the place for it. You can check it out, get a taste of what it's like coming up at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. We're about two months away from that. It's June 22nd through the 29th, and Free Talk Live will be broadcasting live every single night. You don't want to miss this event. If you can make it up for just a few days, I mean, if you can come up for the whole week, come up for the whole week. But if you can only make the weekend, for instance, you still want to come up for it. It's an amazing place. The people are wonderful. The Porcupine Freedom Festival is a unique experience that I don't think is matched anywhere. Go and see for yourself. Learn more at porkfest.com, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T.com. you got a month left to buy your tickets online for the Porcupine Freedom Festival. You don't want to miss it. Ticketing ends at the end of May, so go and do it now. And while you're at it, by the way, you can go to freestateproject.org. Sign up for the Free State Project tonight, and Free Talk Live will be donating uh, $10 from you, Mark, $10 from me, $10. $40 total. $10 from another listener, $30 total to St. Jude for every signer that the Free State Project gets by midnight Eastern, or are you going to give them to midnight uh, Pacific midnight or Hawaii? Midnight Eastern was the... Uh, midnight time. Eastern? Okay. Midnight Eastern tonight. So you still have a few hours left. If you're listening to us live tonight and you're thinking of, you've been thinking about signing up for the Free State Project, you're almost out of time to get this 30 bucks sent to St. Jude and 10 bucks to have for internet. Frankly, Ian, um, I'm probably going to look in the morning <laughs> and uh, make my, you know, Okay, so you may have the overnight then. There may, be, there may be the overnight, but I wouldn't risk it either. Yeah. I mean, you know, so sign, up, sign now. up now at Free State Project. It's not that hard. Anybody can, I mean, you've got a work. smartphone in your pocket. Sign up. All right, so uh, 855 450 free. We'll talk more about the DOJ going after porn stars here in a moment. We've got Jay on the line in Massachusetts first. Jay, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. Hey, Jay. Actually, I'm in New York today at the oh. Higher Ground Bible College helping people out. But uh, a little bit of a free man, really lover get together up here. Uh, but a friend of mine who uh, works at a bank, she's a bank manager. Uh, was telling me last week she's going to go to this seminar about Bitcoin and citizens. 
Bitcoin and sovereign so she, citizens. All right. She called me this morning horrified. She went to this thing yesterday. And it was put on by Webster, Webster Bank somewhere in Connecticut. And uh, there was about 120 jacked up state troopers, is the way she put it. It just come out of Marine, Marine Corps. And about 15 uh, bank professionals, uh, bank managers and whatnot. And what they were talking about was they played these sovereign citizen videos, and they talked about how um, sovereign citizens record cops and how uh, they threaten to sue cops and how they think that they have uh, rights and they don't have to get licenses and pay taxes. So there was a video that was played, and I'm not sure if it was someone from – you guys might recognize this video. I haven't seen it, but what she said – was the video was in the courtroom, and a guy was going in the courtroom with a cell phone and said he was going to record his court hearing. And they told him, no, put your cell phone in your car. He goes, no, I'm going to record it. I have a right to record it. And the the bailiff just tased him. Hmm. And when that happened, all the cops, um, like, cheered like their team just scored a goal. They were, like, really amped up about this. And she said herself... And the other people who were she was sitting with that were bank professionals were utterly horrified. They couldn't believe the reaction of the cops. Hmm. They thought it was pretty extreme that they were so happy that this guy who just wanted to make a recording got taped. Well, you know, this wow. is this is what happens when you get in sort of insular group. And frankly, I think this is one of the problems of Free Talk Live and why I love the fact that anybody can call in about anything and call us on the carpet all the time is that, y- you know, you, you get into these conversations where you're never questioning yourself on anything. Your premises aren't questioned. These police officers aren't questioning the fact that, hey, look, who's watching the watchers? And th- they're not asking that question of themselves. They're saying, oh, well, some, some, some dirty, stinking, lying politician wrote a rule down, and now nobody can uh, record us because that's just the way it is. Ha, 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 Get him! You know, like, that's, that's the, the conversation they're having in their head. And you're, whoa, 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 mister. In a free society, exactly why can't we record what goes on in courtrooms? Oh, you, you, well, rape rape victims. Well, I'm not trying to record any rape victims. I'm trying to record my own trial. Uh, I don't know. Like, they don't have an answer. You know, that's when the taser comes out. Jay? So, they talked about that. They mentioned cop lock several times. Wow. They mentioned anybody that uses Bitcoin, people who are cop blockers, and this is a growing thing. Uh, people who right use about Bitcoin that. and are into cop blocks are no different than the people who blew up the Oklahoma City building. It, mm. it, it is exactly what they told these cops. They were told that um, anyone who is a sovereign citizen is com- is uh, that believes in the Constitution is heavily is to be considered heavily armed, extremely dangerous. They all have. They're all basically carrying guns uh, right on their lap and driving around. They don't have driver's licenses. And here's the funny part. They're t- well, they're talking about people who don't have driver's licenses, don't have Social Security numbers, or get rid of them or turn them back, um, are these people. And so the one woman says, why do you have us here for you know, who work in banks? Jay, hang so, on. Oh. I want to get the rest of the story from you here in a moment. We'll do that uh, with uh, Jay Noon calling about a disturbing story, Uh, bankers being given information about cop block and Bitcoin. It's Free Talk Live. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud, the fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste, and safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com I'm a very bad man. And today I watched you leave for work. Then I kicked your door and took your stuff. Without a door devil reinforcing your door frame, it was like you invited me. Don't worry, I'll check back in a couple weeks. 
Once you've got new stuff. <laughs> Door Devils are available at participating Ace Hardware stores and locksmiths. Or visit DoorDevil.com. An update now on a legal battle emerging around the Onion News Network's own Jode Kressbeckler. After the shocking story yesterday that a group of assailants attacked Congressman William Cummings, tied him to a horse, and dragged him through a briar patch, some are now saying these statements from Mr. Kressbeckler last week may have incited the attack. Bootlegging Congressman Cummings ought to be tied to a horse and drugged through a briar patch. Mr. Kressbeckler's show is billed as an opinion and entertainment program. Yes, it And is. he even calls himself nothing but a caterwauling old badger, so right. the claim that he would incite people to violence seems pretty far-fetched. He displayed a map of Congressman Cummings' home in relation to the nearest briar patch, told his viewers where to purchase a, quote, good pulling horse, and used a life-size dummy of Congressman Cummings to demonstrate effective knot-tying techniques. Right. You know, I think most reasonable people would see that as simply a rippled political satire. Right. Br briar patch is obviously a metaphor for the prickly political atmosphere in Washington, and drag from a horse means something else. Makes sense to me. This is the Onion News Network. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever's on your mind. Still to come, more on the porn stars under attack by the Department of Justice. We'll give you the details on that story also on the way. We'll continue on the list of 30 things, which are now getting close. We're on finally on number 10 on this uh, list of 30 things. 30 things to stop doing to yourself. We'll continue that list here when we get a chance. But your calls come first, and we will continue with those in moments. First, I want to tell you about ProXPN, a global virtual private network. You can get started with ProXPN tonight, and you can start for free at ProXPN.com slash FTL. And what it does is it encrypts your internet connection. It encrypts all the data leaving and entering your computer before it gets to your internet service provider. Right now, if you don't have ProXPN, your ISP is likely recording all of the websites that you visit, sure all is. of the search terms that you enter, and they may be keeping those logs for up to five years in some cases. So that's a pretty big privacy violation. And how do you solve that problem? Well, ProXPN solves that problem, and it does it very quickly and simply. You just go and get their software. It's available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. Plus, there are instructions for Linux users just to email their support department to get those. They're very simple. You get started with ProXPN, and you're protected by encrypting all of your data. Plus, you can select 
the server around the world that you uh, connect to when you get their premium account. Now, their free account is very limited as far as the bandwidth. Premium accounts, unlimited bandwidth. You can uh, select which server you want around the world. I like the Netherlands server, personally. That's got the best privacy protections uh, for doing things like private torrenting, which you can also do with ProXPN. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, and you can get signed up for their premium account with our discount code, FTL20. That gets you 20% off for the lifetime of your account with ProXPN. That's code FTL20. And remember, ProXPN doesn't keep records of your online browsing habits and they've got a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. You've really got nothing to lose. And if you use our discount code you, and you buy the annual plan, you'll get the price down to 5 bucks a month for this incredible level of privacy protection. If you want to save even more, you can pay with Bitcoin for the annual plan. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Ian, if you turn on the ProXPN, one of these uh, VPNs, yes. while you're surfing, mm -hmm. you, then you like, oh, I don't have it on. Then you turn it on. How does that work? What happens then? Well, like if you were in the middle of downloading something, it would probably interrupt your download. It would certainly interrupt your download. Right. But if you're just sort of surfing, you're going from place you're to place. If you're just on a page and you load another page, it'll be seamless. But if you're okay. in the middle of downloading something, it would interrupt that. So okay. It's good to, if you're going to use it, you should use it you know, more consistently. Well, indeed, but yeah. sometimes when you, you know, if you if you have a laptop, um, for instance, I've noticed that sometimes ProXPN doesn't log me back on. Like, I didn't get logged back on with ProXPN. If mm -hmm. I sh shut the laptop, go to sleep, go to a different location, open it back up. Gotcha. Yeah, so. So there you go. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Use code FTL20 for that 20% off. So we continue with Jay in uh, New York. Jay, you're back on Free Talk Live. You said you have a banker friend. She's a manager at a bank. She and her other banker buddies were invited to some sort of government presentation by uh, state police and others on what are so-called sovereign citizens as well as what is Bitcoin, and they were linking all these things together and letting people know these are very, very bad things and that they should be on the lookout. But you had more to tell us about the story, so go ahead. Yeah, so she, she was very concerned that what's going to happen is a, a cop that was at this thing is going to see my Ron Paul bumper sticker and maybe I record cops, uh, you know, shirt and shoot me. Uh, because these guys are pretty amped up. But what they told the bankers is, is oh, we want to make you aware of this stuff because of that these sovereign citizens are going to come to your bank, they're going to apply for a loan fraudulently and never pay for it. So mm -hmm. my, friend says, my friend says to herself, well, how's, if a guy came to our bank with no Social Security number and no identification that was issued by the government, Tell them to go take a long so, walk off a short pier. Right. So uh, that's about impossible for one of these so-called types to actually even do that. But there is a and, movement uh, that there is sort of this movement with uh, you know I'm, I'll call it ter uh, peripheral to the sovereign citizen type that claims that you should take out loans and then not pay them back. I mean I've heard this. Those in people the past. do exist. Yes. Well, it's and. And her thing is, is, you know, she knows my family real well, and she knows actually quite a bit of us. Um, she's not really into it, but after this, this has really piqued her interest because now she really understands how wrong the state is. Hmm. Um, in fact, she, she was not able to sleep last night um, because of this. Wow. Uh, and, uh, um, and she's been a professional uh, financial type whatever her whole life, worked in banks work with accounting firms, and literally up until her pretty much her whole life, she never questioned taxes until, you know, we started kind of like talking about this stuff with her. So, I mean, the so, purpose of this presentation was to get the bankers, uh, you know, kind of keeping their eye open, right? Like to basically be the snitch on the ground more, for the police. More policing, yeah. Oh, to report people, keep lists of people who... You know, may be hesitant about giving social security numbers, may start mm -hmm. asking questions. Um, who people who may um, be uh, doing something with Bitcoin. And so one of the one of the women says, "What is Bitcoin?" And so the guy, and she was pretty impressed with what they had to say. Now, this what I'm going to tell you is not exactly what's been said, but it's pretty close. Uh, they said, "Well, the Bitcoin is just like the Fed. You know, the Fed. The reason that we have." Such high prices of food and energy is because 
after 1971, the Federal Reserve just started printing money uh, literally out of thin air, no, no gold backing, no gold standard. And Bitcoin is the same thing. So, but Bitcoin, no banks are in control of Bitcoin. So Bitcoin could very well destroy our economies if we don't start figuring out. Um, and, and by that they mean destroy the uh, the old way <laughs> and the uh, the old guard and the banking system as we know it. Bitcoin could prevent us from being able to steal Americans' wealth. Right. So the economy will be destroyed. I guess what they mean is the go- the economy for the government, the government economy of them taking people's money and doing what they want with it. Uh, that will certainly be ruined if Bitcoin becomes as popular as it could be. D- uh, Jay, thanks for sharing your experience or the experience of your friend. Appreciate hearing from you tonight, and it makes me, you know, makes you wonder how many other bankers experienced this presentation. I mean, was it just New York, uh, or are we seeing this? You know, is this happening to people that are working in management and banks all across the country? You would think it didn't happen just once. Just once, exactly. So if you've got more info on that, maybe you work in a bank and uh, you can tell us what your experience has been. Although I think there's something important to clarify before we go on here, which is the term sovereign citizen. I have an objection to that particular term. I I don't understand why someone would uh, acquire it for themselves because it seems to be a contradiction right on its face. Well, I think it... uh I believe that this actually goes back to the 14th Amendment, which uh, the 14th Amendment was after the Civil War, where it it basically, on the surface, was supposed to use the federal government to protect freed slaves from the institutionalized, legalized racism of the southern states. Mm-hmm. So all documents prior to—and we might have talked about this on the show a couple of weeks ago—all documents prior— to the Civil War were written as the United States are. And after the Civil War, largely because of the impact of the 14th Amendment and changes in attitudes, all documents were written the United States is. is. So So the United States went from a collection of states to a a corporation. Now, corporation essentially, yeah. The idea of sovereign citizenship uh, originates from a time, I guess, where people didn't have any objections to being citizens of the states in which right. they resided. So uh, this idea that they are now we're all citizens of the nation and the 14th Amendment obviously grants the federal government tremendous power over the states, right? It basically throws out what is it the 10th Amendment? I mean, I don't know why that wasn't like just a ball uh repealing the 10th Amendment to say all powers not vested in the um, you know, federal government lie in the states or the local or the individual. Power is not uh, delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited to it by the um, to the prohibited by it to the states are reserved to the states and respectively to the people. That's the Tenth Amendment. Yes. yes. Uh, Eight fifty five, four fifty free. More about so called sovereign citizens and your calls coming up. Free Talk Live. Angioprim can unclog blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is oral chelation. Easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. Just log on to angioprim.com. That's angioprim, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com. Angioprim users say they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on to angioprim.com. Angioprim.com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better, having fun, and doing more again. Lots more. Talk to a trained Angioprim consultant. Call Angioprim toll-free at 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. Or log on for complete information. Angioprim.com. That's Angioprim.com. Find out how Angioprim can work for you. Get the facts about Angioprim at Angioprim.com. You've been lied to. Lied to by corrupt Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, and I want to give you a free copy of my Inc. Magazine best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire, because Wall Street's 401k and other investment plans have failed millions of Americans. After losing 35% in my IRA in the crash several years ago, I said enough. 
Since then, I've discovered an IRS-approved way to safely grow my money up to 12 to even 17%, cut taxes dramatically, but also have my money protected when the next crash comes. Call now to talk with a specialist to discover this little-known strategy to potentially build a million-dollar tax-free retirement income, get potential 12 to 17% returns, and never lose when the next crash hits. Call 888-885-8820 and discover this tool that people like Walt Disney and J.C. Penney used to safely grow rich. Plus, get one of just 97 free books left. We even cover shipping and handling. Call 888-885-8820. 888-885-8820. Again, that's 888-885-8820. Hey guys, Mark Claire here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the morning roar. That's right. Every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of The Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the ideas of liberty daily. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Have you ever wanted to move to the land of Libpair, Libertarian Paradise, where there's fun for everyone that doesn't initiate force on others, fun for the kids, parties for the adults, buy and sell in silver or Bitcoin, scenic hikes and gun shoots, speeches to educate us all? The Porcupine Freedom Festival is Libpair in the White Mountains of New Hampshire for a week this summer, June 22nd to 29th. Get your tickets now before there's no more room. Porkfest, the event of a lifetime. Porkfest.com. That's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about anything you want. Style toll-free, 855-450-FREE. Porn stars under attack by the Department of Justice. We can talk more about that story as the show moves on here tonight. With you in the studio, it's Ian, Brett, and Mark. Don't forget, you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features we have there. Listening options are included. we got live streams. Uh, you can tune in via our broadband, midband, or narrowband versions of the show. So different stream bit rates for different internet connection speeds. One size will fit your internet connection. Listen.freetalklive.com will get you tuned in. Also, we've got over 145 radio stations from coast to coast. Actually, uh, just had an agreement come in today from a new radio station. I love hearing so, that. So, yeah, that's good news, and we'll let you know more as they uh, they come on board officially. Should be announcing at least a couple new ones, or one at least, uh, this weekend as well. So very exciting about uh, excited about that. But you can get a list of our current radio affiliates over at listen.freetalklive.com. Satellite listening details, uh, the webcam, and the listen line phone numbers, which allow you to call from any phone that can dial long distance. Jay Noon, who we just had on the show, he's constantly listening via his cell phone. Uh, he lives in an area where it's we don't, a great way to listen. Yeah, we frankly. don't have a radio station, so and you know he doesn't have an internet package for his phone. He's just got one of those dumb phones. When I'm so. well, I, I have a smartphone, but I don't. I'd rather not use the, the data plan. You know, it requires a better connection than mm-hmm. your regular cell phone does. I don't care about the audio quality. It doesn't bother me that much, and I can it can hook it right in through the speakers in my vehicle. Um, you know, just does that through Bluetooth. I don't know exactly how it works, but I can play a phone call. So I'll call the LRN.FM listen lines while I'm traveling and I get to listen to LRN that way. It's great. So, uh, again, go to listen.freetalklive.com. We're going to continue with your calls. Just a further thought on uh, the idea of a sovereign citizen. It just doesn't make sense. 
The terms are contradictory. You can't be sovereign and a citizen all at the same time. Even if you're one of these people who says, well, I'm not a citizen of the United States. I'm a citizen of Florida or whatever, you know, arbitrary state boundaries. You, you wouldn't be sovereign. You, to be in. you couldn't possibly be sovereign if you were a citizen. By definition of the word citizen, you know, a sovereign is essentially you're a king over your own dominion. Right. A sovereign is a person who has seceded no rights. Uh, for any sort of protections, um, because that's what a king would be, right? Unless, of course, there was an emperor, and the king uh, somehow held allegiance to the emperor, and the uh, emperor allowed him to continue calling himself a king, but he's still, at that point, not actually a sovereign. Yeah. So a sovereign secedes no rights, and uh, a citizen absolutely does, by its very definition. The, the definition of citizen is one who owes a duty of allegiance in return for an obligation of protection. You're either a sovereign... Or you're, or you're a citizen. A citizen. You can't be both. a sovereign citizen. So it's a ridiculous notion right out the gate, and then you start adding in the questionable legal theories that many sovereign, so-called sovereign citizens believe, like this idea that you were alluding to earlier that you could just get a loan and then magically not pay it off by signing accepted for value or some other conspiracy or UCC uh, 308-1. There's all these theories about you know what you can add to your signature to somehow invalidate uh, getting a loan or something like this that. This was uh, a high, I remember talking about this with someone a couple of years ago. When you sign a check, the line on the check is not actually a line, <laughs> yeah. right? It says something. I don't remember yeah, that's right. what, I it says, what it says, but it has some kind of legal magic right. to it. When you <laughs> sign your name there, it does something. So, I mean, people think it's a line, but if you, you look get a at magnifying a, glass yeah, out. you get a magnifying glass and look at a check, that line is actually letters. See, Ooh. these are the sorts of things that le lend some level of credence to what some of these yeah. people say. But the problem is, uh, look, you've taken a loan out. I understand the argument is that, well, the loan was created with funds that don't exist, right? The banks, Authorized signature only is what I see on one of these lines? The, the banks are, uh, you know, they're essentially loaning money that doesn't exist. It's called fractional reserve banking. They can have X amount of dollars on, on hold in their vault, and they can loan out X times nine or something ridiculous like that. And so they're loaning money that doesn't exist, and they say that your signature essentially creates that money, that you have generated that money by putting your signature on the loan application. And there's some real – there's some good points there. I mean, it's true. The money system is false. I mean, they are making this stuff up out of thin air. But if you get a loan and you don't pay it back, that's going to attract some attention that but, you don't right. want. So the bank franchise itself, the bank, which is a franchise of sort of the Federal Reserve to some extent, yeah. still has some level of responsibility for that loan to the Federal Reserve. So this is what we call in modern parlance stealing, okay? Um, when If you go to a bank and you, you know, this is fraud with your intention of, uh, you know, getting a mortgage and then not paying it back, um, you know, the bank still has a responsibility to the Federal Reserve for that money. The Federal Reserve created the money out of thin air, no doubt about it, but the bank still has a level of responsibility for the fractional money that it put in savings for that loan, Stealing. Yeah. Well, but their their argument would be that you know it's not real money in the first place, so screw them. And, well, the, uh, and the, I get that. The, the, Federal, the Federal Reserve wants its money back, real or not, and you didn't pay it. If it's not real money, pay it back. Well, they're also debt notes, not actual money, and you know you can get into all these legal ramifications of what the system is. Stealing. And, and well, the system itself is stealing, and so I guess their argument would be that they're just taking back what's theirs. Oh, uh, now we have the, so, that, now we have the, uh, the the argument between the coven of thieves. Yeah. Well, anyway, Mark, I'm not saying do this stuff. I think it's a terrible idea. To it's do this just stuff. stealing. Well, I don't know. I think there's an argument that they that they're making that's fairly decent that the whole system is a scam, and Agreed. so therefore, if you're scamming a scammer. What's the big deal? The problem is they will make a big deal out of it, and it will be considered, you know, felony level fraud, and uh, they're going to come after you for it. So, so pay your debts. Well, it's like I think it's one t ten times what the Fed actually creates, whether it's printed into existence or entered into a computer into ex into existence. Ten times that amount of money actually becomes usable by banks? I think it's nine times, something like that. Yeah. I thought it was nine, too. But yeah, a bank, so a bank must have a certain amount in reserve in order to borrow. Right. They can, they can That's loan they out deposits. nine times what they have on their, on their books, from what I understand. Let's continue with your calls and thoughts here and go to Joe in Kentucky. I thought we still had Jay on the line. Nope, Jay's gone. Okay. He's been gone for a little while. Joe, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, how you guys doing? Hey, Joe. I don't know if you remember. I, I talked to you a couple weeks ago. I was uh, starting a new business, and you, your advice was to 
build a sign as big as I could. But uh, anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, I get home from work the other day, and my girlfriend hands me a bill or a letter from the Social Security Administration saying that they have overpaid her $41,000. Whoa. And at the bottom of it, it says, make check payable to or money order payable to. Money order. And I kind of giggle, you know, because I'm like, you know, do they think we just have this, you know, stowed away in the bank account that we're just going to, you know, that we're not living paid to paycheck to paycheck like everybody else? Mm-hmm. Mm. You know. And, uh, Was there an or else on their letter that they sent? Well, they're going to uh, – she gets uh, other benefits, uh, and they're going to garnish her benefits. Mm-hmm. Of course they you are, know, yeah. until until that uh, – uh, until that money's recouped. Now, you know, she's she had an attorney for this, you know, before she got it, you know. Uh, so, and they're saying that she's trying to defraud them. Mm. That's how she oh, ended up with that extra money. Mm. And so our angle is going to be, if anybody defrauded anybody, it was the attorney, you know, mm. trying to get more money, uh, you know, out of a bigger settlement that way. I mean, you know, she's nice. She's, you know, has neither the inclination nor the, uh, I'm not. So is this a disability payment? Nor nor the intelligence to pull something like that off. Joe, are we talking about disability payments from Social Security? Yes, yes. But But prior to the disability payment, she was getting widow's benefits. I see. So yeah. this is one of the problems with doing business with a criminal gang, right? Like, uh, unfortunately, the government's out there offering these freebies to people, and in a lot of cases, people don't feel like they have other options, so they sign up with uh, with the state. Well, once you take and, a little, you you don't have any more options. At that point, it's like, oh, you can't have a job now. And well, uh, the only and then, difference between this and a criminal gang is they haven't, you know, said that we're going to come here and break your legs. That's, Not yet. You know, They'll really, just take the money really that the she's relying on. <laughs> right. Though that's just it. That's what I'm saying here is you you negotiate with a criminal gang, and then don't be surprised when they change the rules on you. Oh, now all of a sudden they're going to dock her checks, and she's going to get a fraction of what she's been getting before, and there's not a damn thing likely that she'll be able to do about it unless she can hire another attorney to exactly. go in and go up against exactly. the the, uh, the Social Security office, which, you know, good luck there because these guys have uh, more money than she does. And thank exactly. you, Joe, for your exactly. call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Look, the government, not a good group of people to get into an agreement with because their agreements are one-sided, meaning that they set the rules, you agree to them, and then if they want to change the rules mid-game, they can change the rules on you. And there's nothing you can really do about it, ultimately. So if you're getting Social Security or you think you're going to get Social Security, you might want to plan differently for your retirement. Uh, More on the way here on Free Talk Live. Hour 3 is next. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs... Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. 
Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 30th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,296. Silver opened at $19.44, and Bitcoin is trading at $445.80. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more at GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Support also comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner, one terahash, only 1,000 watts. Order yours online at bitmaintech.com. And support comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Online at affordablesound.com or call them up at 512-459-5253. In the news, the Supreme Court is currently considering a case that will have heavy implications for whistleblower protections. The court is considering First Amendment rights for public employees and whether or not they are protected from job retaliation when testifying about government misconduct in court. The case stems from the former director of an Alabama college youth program being fired after testifying about corruption involving a state lawmaker. The Supreme Court has previously held that the First Amendment only applies to public workers when speaking as citizens, not in their official roles. The American Civil Liberties Union has filed a lawsuit against the Border Patrol, accusing the agency of excessive use of force and racial profiling. The ACLU hopes to obtain information regarding the Border Patrol's use of checkpoints in southern Arizona, which they claim have previously been ignored. The lawsuit is the most recent by a coalition of civil rights groups and concerned residents who worry about the militarization of their community. Last Friday, a $250,000 Houston police drone crashed into a lake after it malfunctioned during a training exercise. While divers continued to search for the drone, a request by the Austin Police Department to lease a drone intended for law enforcement purposes was denied, bringing the program to a halt. Check out thelibertybeat.com for the full story on why APD's request was denied. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovations. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM, June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours, voiceandexit.com. Support comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central at coreymoreshow.com. And support comes from Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Inc., precious metals at reasonable rates since 1977. Online, rrbi.co. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 30th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. University of Oregon researchers say radiation levels in some tuna cut off the coast of Oregon has tripled. It's believed the results are due to Japan's Fukushima nuclear disaster. According to the researchers, the levels of radioactive isotopes remain a thousand times lower than the safety standards outlined by the United States Department of Agriculture. Despite that somewhat calming statistic, the study's lead author maintains that any amount of radiation is significant. And because of the discovery, researchers will be expanding their tests, planning to focus on a larger number of tuna across the West Coast. The United States and the European Union are implementing a new round of sanctions on Russia for intervention in Crimea, Ukraine. The sanctions are aimed specifically at Russian President Vladimir Putin's inner circle. 
The U.S. and the EU accuse Putin and associates of supporting separatist movements inside eastern Ukraine. Russia's deputy foreign minister described the sanctions as a revival of Cold War-era battles. A new low for President Obama's approval rating, with the most recent poll showing the public's trust falling even further than where it stood earlier this year. The Washington Post-ABC News poll shows that only 41% of respondents approve of the job Obama is doing. That's the lowest public rating he's received in his five-plus years in office. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, CHL courses, self-defense training, and firearm sales. Call them, 512-731-3585, or visit them online, centraltexasgunworks.com. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high-fructose corn syrup in anything. Online, cabobobs.com. This is the Liberty Beat. For Wednesday, April 30th, 2014, I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Saying that he was giving his co-workers at Marley Publishing just a few more days to catch on to him, local mentally unstable man Michael Redding told reporters he planned on exhibiting one or two more warning signs this week before, quote, finally doing this. I think I'll do just a couple of disconcerting things in front of people here at the office. Maybe give them a day or two to take action through the appropriate channels. But if that doesn't happen, then I'm going through with it. The fully unhinged Redding, who plans on, quote, making this thing happen sometime next week, claims that despite displaying erratic and worrisome behavior around the office for the past few months, his actions have gone completely unreported by his coworkers. I definitely talked about my frustration with life in general, and I even discussed my fascination with all sorts of violence. But that still didn't throw up any red flags. We'll see if anyone catches on. Mike? I don't know him super well, but he's nice enough. He's quiet and he keeps to himself mostly, but I'm sure he'll come out of the shell. Just a matter of time. This is the Onion News Network. Take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. Just dial in toll free. The number is brought to you by Pro XPN. It is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you are invited to our website at freetalklive.com. You can enjoy the features there. You can create the content there on the front page of the site. We've uh, combined our site with Reddit. We've got the Free Talk Live Reddit. That's right there on the front page of our website. It's kind of rethemed, so it looks more appropriate for our site. But that's basically what the front page is. Uh, you can submit content there to the front page. You can vote up the stuff that you like there. You can vote down what you don't like. And then ultimately, we can look at the front page of the website before the show and see what it is you think is interesting. Maybe talk about it on the air here. Of course, if you want to get your thoughts on the air, the best way to do it is to call toll-free 855-450-FREE and Skype into the show tonight. Skype username is lrn.fm. We go to the amp lines where Ty is on the line in Tennessee. You're on Free Talk Live, Ty. Hey, good evening, guys. Hey, Hi, have you heard... Uh, or seen any of the arguments online regarding the difference between this idea of thick and thin libertarianism? No, I haven't. Tell I have. What. I've seen uh, the arguments and, and brutal versus I'm not sure what, but... Uh, what is it? Thick yeah. versus thin well, libertarianism? I'm still kind of confused about it, too, but from what I understand, it's pretty much like the idea that if... If everything in libertarianism just goes down to the non-aggression principle, they consider that to be a thin thing because there are certain things that are not technically violations of the non-aggression principle that are still technically wrong, mm -hmm. you know, or socially unacceptable. Sure. And that there should be a thicker form of libertarianism that takes that into account. Now, I don't know the specifics of what you know, what guiding principles or what principles would guide this thick libertarianism. But I think it does address a certain problem that exists in the liberty movement where there's, there's, there's like a connotation or a, uh, an impression of heartlessness in the liberty movement. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Libertarians are considered to be selfish, uh, evil old men. Uh, privileged white men right. as yeah, well. That too. Now, take for example the the reason that what spurred this on was uh, there's a, a Facebook meme posted uh, specifically because Brent 
is co-hosting tonight, so it had to do with compulsory education. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the one somebody commented on it that you know it's too bad that libertarians are against uh, are against education, right? You know because <laughs> uh, you know th- this this is just a bad thing. And and the meme was really not about public schools anyway, but it was really about the compulsory indoctrination system. Okay, but anyway, it still speaks to how the impression is that that libertarians are just these heartless bastards, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, and, people have decided to call school education, and I mean, you know, it's kind of important to define your terms. I know school doesn't teach that because it's not education, but, you know, I, one of the, the most effective things I think you can say to somebody who's willing to listen and, and somewhat open-minded is is to make a distinction between what education is. Education is a lifelong process. It's intrinsically motivated, you know, learning about the things you want. Um, uh, d- uh, unschooling is what how adults learn after they're done with college. Yep. Well, you know? all, that's, all that's fine, but, I mean, I think that there's two really important points that go into uh, rebutting sort of, uh, you know, government education, and that is, well, what do they do when you want to send your kid to some other place? And the answer is, well, that doesn't matter. You've got to pay for the public school because of the poor people. Well, wait a second. If you want to pay for the poor people, then we should have some kind of means-based uh, scholarship, not a government school system, which essentially is populated by middle-class white kids. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, that's, that in and of itself, the, the whole system is based on a big, fat lie there. And secondarily, we can look at the facts with the uh, government school systems is that 20% of their um, graduates are functionally illiterate and 40% in some zip codes. Mm-hmm. You could just not educate kids. You could not send kids to school at all and get those kind of numbers, it seems to me. Especially today, yeah. Yeah, that's, what, what I'm really trying to get at is the fact that or the, the real problem I'm trying to figure out a way to promote is to add some heart and compassion into the liberty movement Um I also, there was also a meme posted of Neil Peart the other day, and Neil Peart, on his article where he talks about libertarianism, he calls himself a bleeding heart libertarian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which that was so unusual to hear that term, a bleeding heart libertarian. <laughs> what does that really mean? You know, so I mean, there's a lot of people in the liberty movement that have a big heart, like there's the uh, the FR three three aid free aid. You know, that's it's a mutual aid type deal. Mm-hmm. So there are people, and I guess that's traditionally that would be more of a leftist thing. You know, so there's still a little bit of a shading of the left right paradigm in the liberty movement. Here in New Hampshire, we but, have uh, the Shire Sharing, which is a group that goes and feeds folks during uh, Thanksgiving time. 100 Night Shelter here in Keene is set up by a libertarian. Um, well, he's not involved in that anymore, but yeah, that's. Uh, he's still was. on the board. It, no, I not said anymore. He. Was set up. Okay, that's the enough. terminology yeah, I use. He's used. not on the board anymore either, but it's a good organization. But I, I totally understand where you're coming from, Ty, and it is a huge uh, problem with the liberty movement. Is that there are people who uh, believe themselves to be libertarians, and by all evidence, they are, who are very, very poor at explaining the ideas of liberty in a way that somebody who uh, is compassionate will be able to understand. Well, uh, the the fact is that the non-aggression principle is a basis for uh, inner human interaction. It is not all of human interaction. So I fall into the thick category here mm-hmm. because I operate from some other paradigms besides just the non-aggression principle. Absolutely. Uh, to me, the non-aggression principle is not good enough as a as a rule to govern human interactions. It's a rule, but it should not be the An only important one. Right. It should not be the only rule. I also like peace and I like you know, forgiveness, and I like, you know, helping people and, you know, all those other things. And there's a compassion. lot of compassion. Compassion, yeah. yeah. Because there's... there's... Exactly. And I, I, would like to, I would like to get over that stigma that libertarianism has, or even voluntarism has, of, of being heartless and ruthless and just not caring. Well, and uh, I'm, just, I'm just trying to, you know, come up with some ideas of how to try not, not to combat it. You know, that's a... That's a, that's a you know, combative is a is a uh, a phrase I don't want to use anyway. But somehow to get to overcome that negative stereotype, 
and show the heart of libertarianism. Things like, you know, Mary Ruart's Absolutely. Healing Our World is much better than, like, trying to give somebody Rothbard, which Rothbard's got some good stuff, but he also talks about things like when it comes down to, to uh, how to treat kids, well, kids have no rights. You know, you can starve your kids, and it doesn't violate the non-aggression principle. Yeah, it's really Bam, nice. You're heartless. <laughs> yeah, I You're mean, automatically heartless, you know? You don't want to be handing people Rothbard or, or Walter Block, <laughs> like, you know, well, defending the undefendable right out of the, the gate. And I think it speaks to this fact that, you know, you have to ask what is and and where where do we stand as far as trying to uh, put a more compassionate face or really put more genuine compassion into the philosophy of liberty. And I think... Uh, as far as perceptions are concerned, right now we stand in a pretty deep hole because there is a an extraordinarily powerful propaganda machine that we're up against. I totally agree, and oh, yeah. I think that the only yeah. thing you can really do to further this a concept, Ty, is to do things that will bring attention to yeah. compassionate acts by libertarians, where whatever news coverage comes out of it makes it clear that this was some whatever it was that you're doing. You know, Shire Sharing is a good example here in New Hampshire. That it's a group of libertarians who are repainting the the, ch the church that well, got tagged with the anarchy symbols, or people that are, who are you know, nasty enough are just going to say, "Well, that's not good enough. You're only doing it for whatever reason." Oh, you're, doing. you're nothing well. compared to the state and yeah. all its well, beneficence. Yeah. But, but these people who think that generosity means stealing money from other right. from you know their rich friends and giving it to their poor friends. I but mean, the fact crazy. is, the libertarian movement will always have people coming into it who are coming from kind of the conservative perspective of just a bunch. You know the kind of the viewpoint that they just want to keep what's theirs, and as long as those people are coming into the movement, and I don't want them to not come in, but as long as they're coming in, they're going to be very poor communicators to the people who want to help other people. Uh, there's just two different types of people involved in this. There's more coming up. We can continue here. It's Free Talk Live. Thanks, Ty, for the call. All right, hold on, hold on. We got to interrupt the regularly scheduled stuff for just a minute. I've got to tell you about this because it's weird. It'll make sense. What if I told you that eating this one weird spice could actually help you reverse diabetes? I know it's crazy, right? Well, if you or somebody you care about has diabetes or prediabetes or metabolic, met, bleh, easy for me to say metabolic syndrome, you've got to check out this video. It's free. You may have heard about this. People who've tried it say that they've been able to normalize their blood sugar, stop taking their diabetes meds, and their doctors are all for it. So what is it? What's behind this? Well, the company says it's a natural drug-free approach to reversing diabetes, and they say that it works in as little as four weeks, and it all starts with this one weird kitchen spice you probably have in your kitchen right now. So you should check out the free video and see for yourself. It's at weirdspice55.com. So write that down. It's weirdspice55.com. Weirdspice55.com. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, April 21st, 2014, gold opened at $12.98 and 80 cents. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for $13.46, $6.73 for a half ounce, or $3.36 and 50 cents for a quarter ounce. That's $13.46, $6.73, and $3.36.50. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, the road to freedom. 
a film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. We talk live. Bring up anything you want here toll free. We're talking about the heartless libertarian problem. But you can also take control of the airwaves here. The number is 855-450-FREE, as Mark is tearing up a piece of paper over there. Not sure Did you hear why. that? I imagine people could, who, who are listening carefully could definitely hear it. Yeah, now they absolutely <laughs> can hear it. Thank you. For that. It's very effective. All right, so we're here to take your calls, 855-450-FREE. Skype username is lrn.fm, and you can join us online at freetalklive.com. You know, here at Free Talk Live, we enjoy bitcoins. Uh, we do take uh, bitcoins for our advertising dollars. And uh, dollar that's, that's bitcoins. kind of a silly thing to say. Yeah. Like, we're taking bitcoins for our ad buys from our clients. One can purchase uh, ads from Free Talk Live with yes. Bitcoin. Uh, but what about 25% of our business is Bitcoin? Yeah, 25 to 50, depending on the month. And we got started in Bitcoin thanks to one of our advertisers really encouraging us to, uh, to take the Bitcoins. And uh, we would like to encourage you to accept Bitcoins from your customers as well and uh, give them options to uh, pay with Bitcoin and you know try to pay your vendors with Bitcoins. And there's a way that you can do, uh, do that with your customers. Yeah, blockchain.com uh, makes a, has a great uh, vendor app. What do, you, what do you call this? A uh, merchant app. Merchant app. I'm sorry, I don't know all these terminologies. Um, but you can go get an app there free for a smartphone or a tablet and accept Bitcoin in your business safely, securely, and for free. There are no terms of service. No terms of service. When has this ever happened to you on the internet? No terms <laughs> of service. <laughs> no ID requirements of any kind. You just go to blockchain.com and download the app from the Google Play Store there. Get started. Zero fees from blockchain.com. Now, if you're wanting to use Bitcoin sort of in your private life instead of a merchant app, you can go to blockchain.info. That is their sort of um, individual side, and blockchain.com mm-hmm. is the their business side. side. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Blockchain.com. All right, so before we go back to the phones here, just a, a few more thoughts from the panel on this idea of the libertarian, uh, the, the, this common idea about libertarians that we're heartless and that libertarians don't want to help people. You just want to destroy things. You just want to destroy education. You want to destroy the roads. You want to destroy, you know, fill in the blank. Libertarians just want to break things down. They never want to build things up. They never have any alternative ideas. They never have any solutions. Well, we believe that the marketplace will likely build things, um, will build things up in the absence of a state-run uh, monopoly. You know, uh, what I'm thinking right now, we don't have enough words. I, I think that's really the problem. And I, and I think through the years, like, you've you've changed your labels, Ian. You used to call yourself an anarcho-capitalist. You called yourself Briefly, a free yeah. marketeer yeah, at one right. point, a uh, voluntarist. And I like volunteers. Yeah, I, I I think libertarian as a term is it's not as silly as people on the left calling themselves liberals, which actually ironically meant free at one time. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's too big of a tent, right? If well, Bill Maher and Glenn Beck can both be underneath it, it's too big. I agree. Well, you know, a progressive also is a is a crappy term. Progressing towards what? Oh uh, yeah, that's well. I mean. I like the Democratic Socialists. At least they say it. 
Uh, yeah, it's not a euphemism. Right. <laughs> we're just saying, you know, we're going to educate enough the population and how they can, uh, you know, use socialism to their advantage, and we're going to enact it democratically. Okay, so the libertarian tent's too big. Where are you going with that? Well, I, I mean, I think we need to specify our terms more, and I think we could maybe come up with a new term that kind of steps away from libertarianism. And it at least, like, because people, when you hear libertarianism, it's just like you're dismissed by a lot of people. Mm -hmm. They have a picture in their mind, whatever's convenient, so it doesn't challenge the belief system that they're comfortable with, and they don't have any questions. So when you tell somebody— They just don't want to hear it. Right, but if you tell somebody you're a voluntarist, that sounds— Nicer. I agree. You know, like somebody who volunteers at the kitty shelter. And people know? won't have as many preconceived notions about that. that they term. won't. And it also creates an opportunity that the word libertarian might not. And that's an opportunity for them to ask to you have a conversation. A yeah. question or two. Yeah. I don't use the term. People don't usually say, What are you? Um, you know, I mean that's just not what it's not a conversation they have. So I just don't use the labels. You know, I will well, talk I'm, about, I'm totally with Brett here. I, I agree. Mean, if you get the opportunity to label yourself as a voluntarist, that could spark the question of well, what's that, mm -hmm. and then you'd have the opportunity to talk about it. But coming back to this issue of libertarians being harsh towards others, it has everything to do with the way libertarians communicate. If uh, if you're a libertarian who's become come to the ideas of liberty from the right, you will not be a good communicator with somebody who is on the left. Mm -hmm. Just right out the gate, you're not going to be a good communicator. You haven't lived, in, you haven't run in those circles. You don't know how to couch the issues in the terms that are going to resonate with those people. So you take an issue like the war on drugs. It's pretty easy to talk about the war on drugs to somebody who's on the left from a human compassion kind of perspective. There's sure. all kinds of points you can make about ending the war on drugs and how that's going to help people. And that, how that'll actually help people get help with drug abuse. And you know, we can point out evidence from Portugal and things like that to back up those arguments. But if you're a, uh, a conservative, the, the way to persuade a conservative would be to talk about how all the money the government is wasting on this war on drugs. And that you know, we're wasting police resources on going after pot smokers instead of murderers and rapists. So there's a whole different set of points that you can make to bring a conservative to be more likely to oppose the war on drugs. And so if you bring a conservative into a discussion, or, or somebody who was a conservative who's become libertarian, into a discussion with a, somebody who's a liberal that you would like to become libertarian, uh, you're probably not going to do a very good job at communicating to that person. So you have to know your audience, and you have to tailor the viewpoint, the points that you make to that audience. And most people who are new to the ideas of liberty haven't realized that. And so they just go off, you know, if they're conservative, they go off about how they want to keep all the money they've earned and screw the rest of you and blah, blah, blah. Uh, whereas a liberal is going to be talking about helping people. And that's not going to resonate with a conservative who just wants to keep the money that he earned at his business. So it's a, it's a communication breakdown, ultimately. Yeah, I think that's, that's about tact. But I think there's also deeper and broader questions that people should ask themselves. And one of them is, what's my motivation? What are the motivations? motivating factors that brings me to this. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, because I think you have to speak a somewhat uh, compassionate language with yourself first. If you're all angry inside, yeah, I agree. You, you know, you don't have a lot of positivity to uh, give to anybody else. And especially with these ideas, when everything else, like once you under, once you read a book like For a New Liberty or The Market for Liberty or Healing Our World, you've are pretty sure you're not wrong. And that can come with a little bit of attitude. It sure. can come with shaming. It can come with being very pedantic in a way that really turns people off. Yep. So one of the things that I realized is I got into this. One of the, the appeals was some really great shaming of people that you can do. Uh, the zingers are great, <laughs> you know, and it's a way to have the intellectual and moral upper hand. And that's it's not, not going to bring people on board. Absolutely way. not. And that's not what motivates me today. But I think a lot of people might be in this for a kind of intellectual and moral Certainly bullying. Certainly could be true. If, even if they don't realize it. And for years now, a lot of us have tried to... Some of them embrace it, like Chris Cantwell. I mean, he calls himself an a-hole. Yeah, absolutely. So um, that's entertaining, but and, and there is a place for entertainment, yep, and that's true. Chris has done some things that 
are entertaining, but I wouldn't like you know bring him into a crowd of people I was trying to convince right. and say this a is my newbies. spokesman. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't wheel him out in front of the Catholic Church to talk <laughs> about uh, you know. Well, that's one of the problems is you don't get to decide who the first person is exactly that a random person encounters as a libertarian. Hopefully, it'll be you as a good communicator, but odds are good it won't be, and you don't know who that first libertarian is going to be, and it's probably somebody who hasn't uh, honed their communication skills, and they're going to botch something up, and then that person's going to jump to conclusions about what all libertarians are like as a result of that. There's more coming up here. It's Free Talk Live. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now, thanks to Dan Pillow, you can get the tax help you need to end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pillow. I've helped thousands of people reduce or eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. With the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. Or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here... I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why if you love liberty... You should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Music. 
It's Free Talk Live. Take control here toll free at 855-450 free. Join us online at freetalklive.com. Join us on the phones via Skype. You can Skype into the show, username lrn.fm. We were talking about Bitcoins a moment ago. How do you get them? Well, we told you how to get a wallet. You can go to blockchain.info and get your free Bitcoin wallet there. But you then have to acquire Bitcoins to put in the wallet. And you can do that at cashintocoins.com. It is easy, safe, fast, legal, inexpensive. And customer service is their top priority. You can use a money order, check, or send them a wire transfer. And their rates are, I would say, unbeatable. I've never seen a better rate than uh, cashintocoins.com. It's possible, I suppose. I've just never seen it. Yeah, there, some of the rates I've seen on uh, you know, getting Bitcoins are just ridiculous. Yeah, I've seen 9%, 10%. I mean, Cash into Coins was 3% last I looked. And if you want to pay 0%, you can do that with Cash into Coins. You just have to buy less than $40 worth of Bitcoins through them. Just go to cashintocoins.com. That's cashintocoins.com. As we go to your phone calls and thoughts, let's go to Lot in Michigan City, listening to WIMS in Indiana. Hey, Lot. Namaste, brothers. How are you? Namaste to you. Go ahead with your thoughts. Um, well, I wanted to comment on all of the previous gentlemen that have spoke before me real quick, if you don't mind. Um, first, I remember hearing you guys talking about signing off money and that they're stealing and where is it stealing from. They're stealing it from you, you the individual, the individual who is going to work every day and, you know, trying to do what you have to do to make ends meet to survive a day. Well, they're stealing from you. They're stealing your time. They're making you chase something that doesn't really exist. And it exists, and we still need it in the sense of a concept, but we can ultimately get rid of it. Um, you had the gentleman... Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Who, can slow, we down. slow down just a little bit there. Who, who are the thieves in that case? Those in which who give us the money. You mean like the the, the Federal, Fed, Reserve. Federal Reserve, well, the banks? Ultimately, where it comes from, right? Ultimately, where it comes from is from the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve, who says that oh, it's the money is backed by gold that we have in establishments, but we know that they don't have any gold. They don't so make that claim anymore. By the way, they took the uh, the silver certificate right. and gold, you know, information off the money. But it's kind of ago. there in the past, right? Like, yeah. like there was certainly right. the, the currency was backed by gold at one point. People kind of have that feeling that it's backed by something, because it looks just like the currency that was. Right, but it's no longer anymore. And you're right, a uh, lot, that the Federal Reserve is printing money out, and that ultimately does steal uh, steal the it value. It does steal, but it... It does steal. Well, you're ta they're taking something that doesn't belong to them. stealing savings. They're stealing it's the value stealing from your savings. It's because you willingly choose to use this currency. You can use gold and silver yeah. if that's what you want to do. This has been an opportunity for people for decades, and they choose not to do yeah, it. Yeah, but Mark, you know that most people aren't aware that that's happening. They don't know what inflation really is. You get taught in government school that inflation is an increase right, in prices. I'm being a little pedantic, but I, you know, I would... When you take something that's not yours without permission, that's stealing. It in this devalues case, stealing, your savings. They're stealing the value of your savings. And so, Lot, you're absolutely right about that. And uh, it's one of the reasons why we're such big fans of gold, silver, and Bitcoin here on Free Talk Live, uh, because uh, with you know alternative currencies, the government isn't in charge, and uh, the banks aren't as in charge. Well, see, that's the objective, because the ones who are trying to manipulate the, the, the overall worldwide scheme are the bankers and the ones who say they have the money. And I agree that we should have something more based something more valuable for a currency. And those who buy gold, unless you have actual physical gold in your hand, and I, which I believe is illegal to hold gold bullion unless you have the permits or no. so forth. Uh, no, that's, so not, that's so, not true. You that can hasn't go right, been true since the 70s. You can go right now to gold.freetalklive.com and you can order all the gold and silver that, uh, that you want and they'll ship it right to you. And, uh, and But I do agree that it is important to have gold and silver in your hand as opposed to some sort of note that claims that it's in a vault somewhere. That uh, can easily be debased <laughs> and taken right out from under but your nose. Historically, that hasn't worked oh, out. Yeah. Hey, Lot, I wish we had more time right. to get more of your comments, but we've got other folks who want to get on here, so we're going to let you go for tonight. But call back another night with anything else you've got. Appreciate hearing from you. He's a new listener. He called in for the first time uh, the other night. I think it was last night. Last night, yeah. So uh, our toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Let's go and continue. Dave is in Michigan. You're on Free Talk Live. Dave. Dave. Hi, uh, how are you doing tonight? Splendid. Go ahead with your thoughts, Dave. Um, basically, I've been listening to your guys' show for a little while, and I find it pretty interesting. Thanks. I guess what I'm looking for is just, you know, an overall 
you know, explanation of the Free State Project. And in addition to that, a couple of the concerns that I really have are, you know, and I'm sure that you have an answer for this because you guys seem like good, compassionate people, but, you know, some of the safety nets that we believe are offered by government or, um, you know, they may or may not be, but some of those things like um, providing health care to individuals that can't, that don't have it or, you know, how does that come into play when we're talking about the Free State Project? All right, let's start with the first question. Brett, do you want to handle what is the Free State Project? I think I'd like to handle the health care question All if right. I could. Mark? Well, the Free State Project is a movement to move 20,000 liberty-loving individuals to one state. What happens after that is kind of up for grabs. Um, what happens hopefully when you Hopefully more get, freedom. Yeah, hopefully, certainly, certainly more freedom. We can see some evidence of that uh, germinating at this point, um, but, you know, that's that's the that's all the Free State Project is. It isn't a prescription for anything beyond moving twenty thousand people to one place. People who love liberty. Yes, people who of, love liberty of freedom. So right. So just freedom. Um, I under, and I agree with that wholeheartedly. But I do see a need to take care of people that maybe are, you know, less advantaged or handicapped or individuals that have fallen on hard times. I mean. I worry that there would be a situation where these people would just get left out. Is there something that you've seen where, you know, the community takes care of those individuals or uh, well, I, or do you think that that's not an issue? Do you think that those people will just take care of themselves? Oh, no, no, no. There are some people who are clearly uh, incapable uh, of taking care of themselves, and, and that's a, a very important question. I mean— uh, I think we've been fortunate here that there have been very few incidents of people needing something like that. Um, I, but you know, I mean, having a lady a, fell off her porch, and yeah, broke, broke her, her back, spine. yeah, and and I, I believe got a lot of support and help from the she community. Got, got a job she can do from the Free State Project itself, and yeah, and I mean, that's that's the thing. I mean, that's one of the benefits of just having community. Um, that, you know, you make connections with people, you establish caring relationships with people. And if somebody falls on hard times, you know, it's, it's possible that they're, they're going to get the help that they need. And I think we've seen a couple examples of that. Well, that's nice, Brett. Okay. You take care of your own, but what about all the people in the state run nursing homes? I mean, what are, what's going to happen to those people? You're talking about getting rid of the state. You're going to put all those uh, crippled old folks out on the streets. This is the heartless libertarians we're talking about. All right. Well, here. there's there's another problem as well, and and there's certainly a, a history that can show us a different way. There's a book, I believe it's called, I don't know the author, it's called The Tragedy of American Compassion, and it explains the story of, you know, how there's always been people who were less fortunate or in need of medical care. And throughout most of even even the 20th century or the first half of the 20th century, uh, there was a lot of mutual aid societies, lodge medicine, uh, people getting the help they need outside of government. For I mean, throughout most of uh, the history of America, uh, people saw that as more of a religious function. There are even health sharing ministries today where, you know, you pay in uh, every month and if you have some kind of serious health problem, then uh, you you can draw uh, from this pool and, and get support. So, I mean, there's a lot, but, but the, the other problem is like that what's always exempted from these conversations is why are the, why are these services so expensive? Why is a nursing home or, uh, you know, a, a heart surgery so expensive? Why does a trip to the doctor cost $300 for nothing sometimes? You know, and and I think that is really the product of uh, of government regulation in those markets. Mm -hmm. Now, this, explaining to you how we got there, how we got into this hole, doesn't really offer much of an answer uh, as to how we get out. But looking back at history and how things looked in the past and how things were done in the past at least gives us you know an, a, a compendium of ideas that we can present to people about how to go forward let's talk about that further and dave if you want to stick with us we'll continue the conversation uh 855 453 that's 855-450-3733 and i think that this conversation ties right into what we we're talking about earlier with this whole heartless libertarian idea and let's uh, let's give it some heart coming up here in moments free talk live 
Angioprim can unclog blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is oral chelation. Easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. Just log on to angioprim.com. That's angioprim, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com. Angioprim users say they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on to angioprim.com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better, having fun, and doing more again. Lots more. Talk to a trained Angioprim consultant. Call Angioprim toll-free at 877-882-7221. That's 877-882-7221. Or log on for complete information. Angioprim.com. That's Angioprim.com. Find out how Angioprim can work for you. Get the facts about Angioprim at Angioprim.com. I'm David Crudeni, President and CEO of Cigna. We're proud to support the March of Dimes by walking in the March for Babies. It feels great to know that the money we raise funds life-saving research and programs that improve the health of babies. With your help, we can make this year better than ever. Join Cigna and our coworkers across the country in March for Babies to help more moms have full-term pregnancies and healthier babies. Start your team today at marchforbabies.org and march to help our babies. Thank you. We love that you're passionate about GCN. And whether you're a listener, a business owner, or a radio industry professional, we've redesigned the new GCN newsletter to keep you in the know. Text GCN Live to 22828 or click on the banner at GCNlive.com. Enter by May 15th. You'll qualify to win a six-month supply of storable food from MyPatriotSupply.com. Start receiving your newsletter today. The future of talk radio. GCN. If you're looking for work, there's a piece of paper more important than your resume. It's the cover letter attached if you're snail mailing or the email to which you attach your resume. Make it four short paragraphs. Paragraph one, say that you're applying for work. The person you're sending to gets a ton of mail about all sorts of things. If you have a password, that's your first sentence. Tom Nelson tells me you and I should meet. Paragraph two, what you do and how that relates to the opening. Be as specific as possible. Paragraph three, why you want this particular job. I'm originally from Boston, so I know the market well. I have family and friends in the area, so this would be a homecoming for me. Paragraph four, unless the job posting stipulates no calls, and I will call you to follow up. Thank you in advance for your time. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Moments remain here. Not going to give you the numbers because we're loaded up with calls. If you don't get in tonight, you can just call in tomorrow. We do a show every single night of the week from 7 to 10 at night Eastern Time. You can join us online if you can't get us on your local radio station. Um, uh, you can join us online at freetalklive.com. You can enjoy features, all kinds of them, for free. And if you like Free Talk Live and you like what we're doing here on Free Talk Live, talking about liberty on a nightly basis, then help us out. Become a Free Talk Live amplifier for 5 bucks a month. Your 5 bucks will be doubled for the next several months. 
Uh, because of some generous contributors who have stepped up to double up to $950 a month in contributions, we have not yet made that full $950 a month goal. We're around 700 I think, in that process, and you can help us with that. We'll take that money in and invest it into Free Talk Live, getting on more radio stations, bringing new internet listeners on board. we got a Google AdWords campaign that we're doing right now to bring people listening, people who want to listen to talk radio, but they don't know anything else. They're just searching for talk radio. They want to find something. Well, we want them to find Free Talk Live, and that's what the AdWords campaign is up to. You can help fund that. You can also help fund our uh, friend and co-host, Daryl, and keep him working for us as doing affiliate relations. He just brought in a new affiliate recently, as a matter of fact. Got confirmation on that earlier yesterday. So he's doing a great job. Your five bucks a month goes a long way, and it gets doubled when you amp now at amp.freetalklive.com. And you get perks like access to the amp-only Facebook group and the amp-only call-in lines, the amp-only forum, and more. Go to amp.freetalklive.com. As we go back to Dave in Michigan, he called in with kind of a general question about the Free State Project uh, and then a larger question about what about people? I mean, if you guys are talking about ending the state What about the people that rely on the state? What about like here in New Hampshire? I think it's ridiculous, but the state runs nursing homes in almost every county from what I understand. Uh, So a lot of people does a lot of people when I say this, that's I'm sorry. When I say the state, I mean this and this idea. I got you. The people who call themselves the state or the county or the city. It's all the state to me. But the idea being that, well, you libertarians, you know, you just want to end the state. So doesn't that mean you want people to starve in the streets because they're not getting taken care of anymore? And, and Brett, you're saying that's not the case at all. You, are we, when you said this goes back to our earlier discussion, were you talking about the button pushing discussion? No, the well, it could go back to it, that. It but, goes back to that, too. Yeah. But no, what I meant was uh, the discussion about how libertarians, some of them come off as as though they're not compassionate towards others. And I think it all has to do with communication. Uh, Dave. What I would have to say to your question is that what most of us, and I don't want to speak for everybody, um, so correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but what most of us who love the ideas of liberty want is we want people to get help when they need help. It's just that we don't think that force, the threat of violence, which is ultimately what backs all government programs, should be used to get those people help. So, yeah, you've got a worthy cause. Let's feed some hungry people. Let's help some people that are sick or infirmed. Let's get them the assistance they need. But let's do it on a voluntary basis, on a consensual basis, where the people who are helping are helping because they are motivated to help, not because they've been threatened by some sort of government agency to help them. And ultimately, I think that's the goal of the people who are in the liberty movement. Does that make sense, Dave? Yeah, no, I understand that. And I think ultimately, I guess my question is, too, is, you know, we talk about the idea of liberty, or you guys do, and talk about the idea of liberty a lot, which I agree with. I mean, complete freedom sounds like the ideal situation. I guess my question is just, it seems like we failed to acknowledge the services that the state provides now, and how in moving to ultimate, you know, complete liberty, how do we bridge the gap there? How do we, you know... Because people don't even realize the services that they're taking advantage of on a daily basis, whether they want to or not. A lot of people don't, but consider that there's a lot of people that don't take advantage of any services um, from the state except for, like, roads. Well, I mean, even anyone... Anyone typically uses roads or yeah, but the state didn't know, offer I mean, that. Go to the basic the, wait a second, wait a second. The state the state stole the the, the land that the roads are currently on um, from you know I, just I can, communities. I can agree with that. And argument. then put concrete I on can it. Agree with that. That they took the just, money from all I just of us. Put how the con- we get to sure. How do we get here's how away we do it. Here's, from here's that? My so how proposal. do you get that land back? How do you get the roads so, back? So here's my interim that? proposal. I mean, there's there's all kinds of ideas that could be thrown out here, and it's a much larger conversation than we have time to have. But the short version right. is, what if, what if people just decided to convert their property taxes into a voluntary payment and decided to send to the people who are the city or the town or whatever, send them the amount that they felt that their services were worth? And, uh, and, you know, then what would happen? Well, then the city or the town would have to start providing services based on the customer satisfaction rather than providing their services based on some arbitrary number they pull out of the air that they want to pull in for tax dollars the next year. I mean, ultimately, if people change how they behave, the people calling themselves the state will have to change how they do business. So I think that could be something. Uh, but ultimately, otherwise... I- I see that, too, but if we're talking about voluntary payments where, okay, you can use the road and then you pay me what you think it's worth, you know, 
at what point, you know, everyone using the road isn't paying anything. I mean, at what point do you, even in the private sector, you have areas of enforcement to enforce the contract, which I guess ultimately leads back to the state. But do you think that people are capable of a society where there is really no enforcement behind where people just I say, don't know. Hey, now now the fact. answer is no. And oh, this, I don't think there is at all. And this is, but this is an important part of the question. Like honestly, and this sounds cynical, but I think that for for this to happen, and I see this as a gradual transition over a long period of time. First of all, we have the state. That's coming down. We don't even have to be involved in that at all. There's seven. To, the government is seventeen trillion dollars in debt. The United States government is going to do what every other imperial power in history has done, and that's uh, stretch to its maximum and break apart and collapse. You're just concluding the uh, the current debt. You're not including the unfunded liabilities, uh, which right? is which is trillions, trillion, trillions right? more. Yeah, like forty or fifty trillion dollars. So that's coming down. Like all big empires before it, one day. It will just be gone. And does it happen slowly and have to turn over control to states or counties or or municipalities? I don't know how that would work. Or does it happen very fast and all at once? I I don't know. But it's going to end. And I think that the other problem is that almost everybody who's alive right now, almost everybody, (laughs) for for these ideas to be embraced, they're going to have to be gone. You know, like we're talking, I think, generations in the future. And I'm I'm not that's not a threat. Okay, but no, you know, I understand. I understand what you're saying. The the mentality of today, whether we're talking about you know these old ideas, the puritanical values of America, the welfare mentality, all of that is going to have to be mm-hmm. phased out over the course of maybe I don't know a generation, five generations. I don't know how long it will take. Well, but what has to be phased out is people's expectation that they can steal from their neighbors to get what they want. Sure. Um, you know, look, we've moved across the board here from social welfare programs to roads and a variety of things where the government has a, <laughs> a strong bail of whack. But the answer to government right. um, to government welfare is um, when it comes down to it here, you, I, I do believe that certain people need to be taken care of, but I think there needs to be a strong means test. And there are weak means tests currently with the government. Basically, once you're on some kind of disability, you're on it for life. And there's nobody really cares whether you're on it or not or whatever, just so long as you're disabled as far as they're concerned. The fact is that w- there's a certain classification of people that will take the freebies and not work. And those people need to somehow be weeded out of the system. And I think that charity is the best way to do that. I no. would prefer to give my money to charity that's going to check these folks rather than um, my money to the government. That's not. But the big fear is that there will be people who won't want to give their money to anything, right? Isn't that the the concern ultimately? Right, that that's kind of what I'm. But thinking, the government's right, so, so so gosh darned inefficient that it really wouldn't matter. They waste somewhere on the scale of seven out of eight dollars that they get. So if you collect mm. one eighth of the amount that you're getting, you probably could do the same amount of work. Right. I, I tend to agree with that perspective, and I think that people are mostly good, and they, they do want to help others. But ultimately, if you believe that people are evil and that most people won't contribute to a, the assistance of I others— I think that ultimately most people are good. I'm just wondering, right. at some level, I think a lot of it—you're um, you know, you're saying that the state operates under fear and threats. But I think ultimately, if you get to a point where there's a free state where each individual has their property, has the right to defend their property— I mean, the only reason that keeps me from taking your property, or the only thing, is basically your right to defend it, right? So we're back to the point no. where it's... No, I and- can agency... Currently, you agent out your right to defend your property to police. I can agent out my right to defend my property to some kind of security company, probably at a significantly less less of a cost than you currently... than any government bureaucracy can possibly operate on. I don't think you have to be sitting out at the corner of your property with a shotgun every moment in order to protect it. Well, right, yeah, and right. I, you so know, we're saying, out of, we're out of time for tonight, Dave. But I appreciate okay. hearing from you. I want to make sure we get Ike in real quick. Uh, you got the last twenty seconds, Ike. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to thank uh, Nima Vadati for his service and ask Brett when he's going to be starting an unschooled school in New Hampshire. Thanks for the call, Ike. Appreciate it. Well, there is a little bit of talk about a school starting in New Hampshire. And there was uh, hmm. one that I was barely involved with called the Scholars Academy in Hooks. It a couple yeah, I was years say, ago. There is some, there's something that I think Kate Baker's involved with. Yeah, Scholars like, closed down. I worked there for a while, and there's talk about it. 
Okay, come here, move here, and uh, help us make that happen, right? Then the more people we have here moving to free, uh, New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project, the more options like that will be on the table. We'll see you tomorrow night at freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. Did you say that you prostituted yourself when you were 10 years old? I was doing something of a sexual nature in return was that for... A woman or a... It was a next door neighbor. He was probably around 16. So he took advantage of you. He... No, sir. He didn't take he advantage of me. You. He corrupted you morally. No, no, sir. It was my choice to climb into his According window. It was Lord. my choice, listen. Lou. It was my choice to take my pants off and get into his listen, bed. It was all my listen choice, Lou. Me. Listen to me, Ian. You do not have the right at the age of 10 to make that decision. Don't you dare tell me what I can and can't what do, mean, do Lou. Dare. I'm telling you, he molested you. No, you Lou. Don't even Sorry, realize Lou, you, you don't understand what molestation is. Molestation is unwanted sexual advances. I consented. I know you don't believe that's possible. I know me better than you know me, Lou. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Toll House Refrigerated Cookie Dough. Who would you bake some love for? Find fun and easy baking ideas at tollhouse.com. Kids love doing arts and crafts projects, especially when you join in. Try channeling all that artistic energy into the kitchen and bake up some creative treats together. Think of your art supplies as the frosting, sprinkles, and decorating gels, and use cookies or cupcakes as your canvas. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Cop Block Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 30th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,296. Silver opened at $19.44, and Bitcoin is trading at $445.80. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more at GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Support also comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner, one terahash, only 1,000 watts. Order yours online at bitmaintech.com. And support comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Online at affordablesound.com or call them up at 512-459-5253. In the news, the Supreme Court is currently considering a case that will have heavy implications for whistleblower protections. The court is considering First Amendment rights for public employees and whether or not they are protected from job retaliation when testifying about government misconduct in court. The case stems from the former director of an Alabama college youth program being fired after testifying about corruption involving a state lawmaker. The Supreme Court has previously held that the First Amendment only applies to public workers when speaking as citizens, not in their official roles. The American Civil Liberties Union has filed a lawsuit against the Border Patrol, accusing the agency of excessive use of force and racial profiling. The ACLU hopes to obtain information regarding the Border Patrol's use of checkpoints in southern Arizona, which they claim have previously been ignored. The lawsuit